the Army cadets. Weather conditions, perfect. We said it was 70, it's about 63. The humidity, 60%. Wind, maybe 12 miles per hour. The outlook, cool and pleasant. It is an ideal afternoon to catch the best of college football. You know, it, it's uh, perhaps less windy down on the field than it is up here. I feel like I'm sitting on top of the world. That's how high we are here at Mikey Stadium. Perhaps the wind will not be as much of a factor down on the playing field. First meeting way back in 1891. Army leads the series 11-5, but last year, Rutgers was victorious. As a matter of fact, Rutgers has won four in a row. Scarlet Knights come in one and three, a win early in the season over Connecticut, and then consecutive losses to Boston College, Syracuse, and Penn State. Army also comes in one and three, losing by two points to Colgate, blown out by Louisville, a game where they had a lot of turnovers. Their lone victory, a one-point decision over Dartmouth, and then the loss last week to the Crimson Tide of Harvard, 24-21. You mentioned turnovers, Bruce, and we said that they had turned over the football 16 times. Army did. Nine of those turnovers occurred in that Louisville game. Thomas Stammert is your referee, and there's the rest of his crew for this afternoon's football game. Mikey Stadium with great tradition. It's an astroturf field. Jam-packed this afternoon. The Corps of Cadets will be among the 40,000 in attendance today. That's Tom Angstad, has had a marvelous season for Rutgers, has been very consistent kicking field goals, eight for 10 and the ball game is underway. Back deep for Army, the ball taken by number 45, Kevin McKelvey, and McKelvey brings it across the 18 yard line and that's where Army will start, first and 10. Let's check the offensive unit for the Black Knights of Army. Starting at quarterback is Rich Laughlin, the fullback guards the road. Tailback, we talked about him, Elton Aikens, and Spellman and Hollingsworth are your wideouts. Offensive line led by the big center, Ron Wright, who is also a good one, and Ron Roos, the left guard, watch him as well. On first down, Army keeps the ball on the ground with Elton Aikens. Aikens has a first down, and he's up to the 37-yard line before Billy Houston made the tackle. So Army opens up in fine fashion on the first play. Here's the Rutgers defensive unit, a five-man front. Lionel Washington and Bobby Dumont are the ends. Big change there, right tackle, Harry Swain replacing Bill Bester, who was out with a knee injury. Mercer Hedgeman, Jimmy Dumont started linebackers, and the deep backs, Howard, Errico, Young, and Bill Houston. Jim Dumont is the injured Rutgers player at the 20-yard line. That is some concern to Rutgers fans. Of course, Dumont has been the outstanding player on that defensive unit for two years now. He is repeatedly the number one tackler on the team and certainly a hard-nosed, aggressive, outstanding all-round football player. Jim Dumont went down with an injury last week against Penn State and then came back into the football game. And that's usually been the pattern when he's been injured early, he comes back. Only once last year against Pittsburgh did he not complete a football game. Looks okay, Sam. Yes, as we indicated, Rich Laughlin has not played very much this year at quarterback for Army. Uh, they have been splitting time at quarterback between Rob Huey, a sophomore, an action-type quarterback, and Bill Turner, more of a traditional pocket passer. Both have been injured. 37-yard line, first and 10 for the Black Knights. They keep the ball on the ground. The handoff goes to Hart Zerone, and Zerone is racked up by Jeff Cordilla, and Sam talked about the ability of Cordilla to catch the ball carrier very quickly. Yeah. Army rarely hands off to the fullback out of that eye formation. Art Zerone has played the entire season for Army. Coming into today's game, he has carried just 12 times for 33 yards. Aikens carries most of the time. Second down, eight. Laughlin hands the ball off to Aikens. Aikens gets up to the 43-yard line. He was hit pretty good in the secondary by Joe Corbin. It will bring up a third and short. Counter type play, fullback going in one direction, the offensive guard uh, pulling out in the other direction had the key block on the play. Third and three. Ball at the 43 yard line. First offensive possession of the football game for the Black Knights of Army. And off the road, and he is stopped short by Jim Dumont back in the ball game. So Army with fourth down and short, and let's see if they send on the punting unit. 
Elton Akins, that tailback uh, that you're looking at, 61 rushes, 242 yards. He was a wide receiver last year. As a plebe, a freshman here at Army, he did play running back, however, and he was a running back in uh, high school. Fourth down, Army will punt it away. Joe Sardiano sends a beauty back to James Shedneck, who misses the ball. It's into the end zone. Shedneck recovers it in the end zone. And Rutgers will come out to the 20-yard line with a touchback. Very lucky situation for the Scarlet Knights. If he had touched the football, he would have had to go back to the end zone, and he could have been caught for a safety, Sam. Let's take a look at this. Under the football, goes right through his hands. He looked it into his hands. He just, perhaps it was the wind, but he couldn't hold on to it. And as you indicated, Bruce, a fortunate situation for Rutgers to recover in the end zone. Had Army recovered, obviously it would have been a touchdown since uh, he did touch the football, the Rutgers player. Jack LaPrairie leads out the Scarlet Knights. Eric Hochberg, who had been the starting quarterback the last three weeks, is out with a knee injury. He's out for the season. There's the rest of LaPrairie's backfield, and Joe DiGiulio leads the offensive line. First and 10, 20 yard line for the Scarlet Knights. Jack LaPrairie back as the number one signal caller, and Dwayne Hooper goes straight up the middle, gets a couple of yards off the right side. Stopped by Jim Jennings and Larry Carroll. Let's check the five-man front for the Black Knights of Army. Larry Carroll's the man to watch. He is the left end. And Jimmy Jennings, the local boy from North Brunswick, New Jersey. Linebackers John Roney and Jim Gentile, both excellent football players. Griffin, Bryant, Aiton, and Bastion are the deep men. Second down and eight for Rutgers from the 22-yard line. The Prairie pitches out to Hooper, and Hooper gets two yards on the play. Racked up by Jim Gentile. Dwayne Hooper has come on nicely in the last two football games. Yes, he has. Gentile has been their outstanding uh, linebacker this season. The two starting linebackers, inside linebackers, have been out with injuries. One is the co-captain, Jim Matroka, the other, Pat Scanlon, both out with knee injuries. They were the starters last year and the outstanding players on that defensive unit for Army. Third and six, Rutgers, ball to the 24-yard line. Andrew Baker wide right, Boris Pendergraft wide to the left. The Prairie to throw, has time. Now looks to scramble, and he finds Dwayne Hooper up at the 27-yard line. Hooper brought down by John Roney, and he is short of a first down. Because that is the difference between Jack LaFrey and uh, the injured uh, Eric Hochberg, who will not be back this season, underwent surgery during the week, is out for the year. Hochberg would have sat in that pocket and never moved, waiting for things to develop. LaFrey took a few steps, and that might have thrown the defense off and actually assisted him in finding the open man on that last play. Gary Liska to punt to Nate Sassaman. Fourth and two, Rutgers will punt it away. Liska hits a short punt, Sassaman fair catch. Or did he call a fair catch? Moves the ball up to the 45 yard line and Army will have excellent field position. No score, 11 minutes, three seconds left in the first quarter of play. We'll be right back. First down for the Black Knights, excellent field position, ball at the 45-yard line. Split backs this time, Aikens gets the call straight up the middle, a couple of yards on the play. Cordilla and Hannes made the tackle for Rutgers. Well, Army evidently has changed their offensive thinking just a little bit. During the week, the defensive coordinator had indicated at the press conference that they ran primarily out of the I formation. They do use multiple sets and different formations, but when they run, they run primarily out of the eye. Today, they've been running primarily from split backs. Second down, call it seven yards to go. Laughlin, bootleg to the right, has the running room. It's a Rutgers territory, out of bounds at the Rutgers 45. Tyrone Stowe ran Laughlin out of bounds. The weight on Laughlin is he can scramble, doesn't scramble quite as well as Rob Huey, the sophomore, who has played most of the time this season for Army at quarterback. Uh, doesn't throw quite as well as Healy or the other quarterback, Bill Turner. Turner out with a concussion. He will not play. We might see Rob Healy, who also suffered a concussion last week against Harvard. Third down and less than a yard to go for Army at the Rutgers 45. And Lachlan goes straight up the middle and picks up the first down. 
McLaughlin has really considered, Sam, the third string quarterback in this club, and because of injuries, as you mentioned, to Healy and Turner, he has gotten the starting assignment, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see Healy before the day is over. You bet. He, uh, he came in last week. Uh, Turner started the football game. Here he came in. He engineered two very impressive 80-yard drives and then went out, uh, went out with an injury, and from that point on, it was downhill for Army. First and 10, Rutgers 44, Laughlin play action pass, has time, now the pocket falls apart and Lionel Washington is there to greet him. About a seven yard loss on the play and Rutgers finally gets a good pass rush. Good pass rush by the uh, Rutgers defensive line. The Army offensive line averages 252 pounds a man. Not a, uh, exceptionally big by today's standards, but the biggest offensive line ever in Army history. They're also bigger, stronger, and more experienced than the 1982 offensive line was here in Army. Second and 17. Split back, Aikens and Zerone. Laughlin hands to Aikens, sweeps to the left side. He's at the Rutgers 46-yard line, and Jim Dumont made a fine individual play to gather in Elton Aikens. Once again, running from split backs, and they evidently want to get the ball to Aikens to the outside. He has the option on those plays. It's not designed. He doesn't have guards out there in front of him where the play is designed to go to the outside. He's breaking off tackle, going to a sprint spot, and then breaking toward the line of scrimmage and taking, taking the open area wherever that develops. Two times so far uh, in this football game, he has broken to the outside. William Lampley checks in at fullback, third and 12 for Army, and Laughlin on a straight drop back. Sets up a screen, puts it out to Aikens. Aikens at the 35, has a first down, ball is not free. And Army looks to recover, and they do. It will be an Army first down at the 32-yard line. The hit was made by Danny Errico, but luckily for the Black Knights, someone there to recover. This play requires timing between the offensive line, the quarterback, and the receiver. It's a screen pass. The offensive line blocks. The quarterback fakes, pump, pumps downfield, trying to draw those linebackers in. You see the offensive lineman out there in front of him. A good block on Jim Dumont. A good hit, which forces the fumble and a break for Army as they recover. 31-yard line of Rutgers, first and 10. Handoff to Aikens. He sweeps the left and runs into a wave of white shirts. Harry Swain and Bob Dumont led the assault on Aikens. Sam, when you have an offense that's so geared to one running back, can't the defense go into a key situation always looking for 23? Doesn't that change things? Well, you can keep him in the corner of your eye, and I have to believe that all good linebackers do that, but you still must take on the blocker. You've got to look at the men in front of you who are going to be blocking on you, so you can't stare at one person. On second and nine, Laughlin rolls out to his right, throws the pass complete. It's caught by William Lampley, but Joe Corbin came up quickly to make the hit. It will bring up a third down and four. Frank Burns, head coach of the Scarlet Knights, 11th season, winning his coach in Rutgers history. And he is a very concerned coach today. He says he needs a victory, but says, believe me, Bruce, the kids will come to play. I don't expect anything else but that. Third and three. Laughlin, hands to Aiken. Aiken tripped up. Great play by Jim Dumas. Super individual play, and the ball very close to a first down. If you remember, Bruce, last week, uh, Penn State trapped Lionel Washington a great deal. Watch the offensive guard number 66, Ron Roish, pulling on the play. Once again, trying to block on Lionel Washington. Had a pretty good block. You see Washington standing in the corner of your screen. That's something that came from preparation on the part of Army. When the coaches view those films and, you know, get ready for the opposing team, and that's precisely what Army is doing. They saw Penn State trap Washington. They're going after it. Short of a first down, it will bring up fourth and inches, and Army will go for it at the Rutgers 21-yard line. A couple of tight ends in the ball game, Mark Triplett, Rob Dickerson. Now here's the eye formation. I believe this is the first time we've seen it. Pull back Lampley, tailback Aikens, Laughlin keeps it straight ahead. Good surge by the offensive line. He only needed a couple of feet, and I would not gander from here if he got it. Wait for the call. It is a first down. Thomas Thomas, your referee today, so the Army drive continues. Uh, early part of the week, Frank Burns was uncertain as to who he would be starting at the nose tackle or nose guard position. George Pickell or Randy Hennis, 
He started Randy Hannes probably because Hannes was a little bigger than Fakel. Hot first down, Aikens gets the call and he runs straight into number 78, Tony Sagnella. Sagnella loses the helmet, but got the ball carry. As we indicated, the offensive line for Army averages 252 pounds. The center, Don Smith, 6'4", 250 pounds. He has been playing well for Army, and I believe that that's the reason that probably Randy Hannes was elected to start at that nose guard position. He stands about 245 pounds, 6'2", Pakel only about 230. Army's been keeping the ball on the ground on first down here. Second down, Nakins, Nakins is at the five, and at the one-yard line. Bill Houston made the saving tackle, but wow, does Aikens take off quickly. Well, he's got the speed, and when a running back, a tailback has speed, you'll see him going now toward the line of scrimmage. He has the option of breaking anywhere he wants along that defensive front seven. He has been choosing to go to the outside, the defensive ends, and the linebackers have been playing tight for Rutgers coming in to stop that play, which they think is going off tackle. He's getting the yardage on his own to the outside. First and goal at the one. Inside handoff, Zerone, touchdown Army. So the Black Knights march down the field, keeps the ball primarily on the ground, and Zerone gets the final yard. We mentioned Zerone had carried just 12 times coming into today's game. I believe this is the fourth time he's carried today, struggles for that yardage, and gets over the goal line. Army has struck first with 6.06 remaining in the first quarter of play. On for the point after touchdown, Craig Stopa. Rich Laughlin will hold. Stopa, 22 out of 22 in his career in point after touchdown. Ball plays down, Stopa's kick is up. It is perfect. Flag is down on the play. Flag down on the play. Offside called against Rutgers. It will be assessed on the kickoff. So with six minutes and six seconds remaining in the first quarter, the score, Army seven and Rutgers nothing. Well, we're up there way in the top of this stadium. The older stadiums tend to have press boxes, which are very, very elevated. And that's where we are on the top there. I think the only other stadium that I've ever been in where I've been quite as high is the one down in Tampa that the uh, Buccaneers play in. And you can get in shape quickly in a stadium like this because there are no elevators. But I tell you, the view is great. It sure is. What a beautiful sight. 40,000 fans, Mikey Stadium. Army leads Rutgers 7 0, five yard penalty assessed on the kickoff. And Craig Stopa will kick it off from his own 45 instead of the 40. James Shednack is the deepest player for Rutgers on the return. The short kick into the wind. Handled by an up back, Scott Drake, and he is dumped immediately, and a flag is down at the 17 yard line. Well, I don't think there's any doubt that the wind is a factor in this football game. You saw in that last kickoff that the wind actually stopped the forward motion of the football, and it is going to affect the passing game today. Here's James Shedneck, but it came short. Scott Drake was there. Penalty will be assessed against Army, and it will be from the 17-yard line. Thomas Stammer today's referee. Dead ball foul against Army, and Rutgers will start from the 32-yard line. Jack LaPrairie leads out the Scarlet Knights. Vernon Williams, Dwayne Hooper are the running backs. Baker wide left. First and 10. Here's Hooper. Hooper gets a couple of yards on the play. Good hit by Jim Gentilly, the junior from Satellite Beach, Florida. There's the Army scoring drive, 54 yards. They did it in 12 plays, and Zerone went the final yard to Pater. And most of that yardage came on the ground. That's precisely what the Army wants to do. Control the football, eat up time on the clock, and of course, not turn over the football. And we've got another penalty against Army. It's going to be another big one, 15 yards, and it will give Rutgers an automatic first down. 
a late hit against the cadets. The Rutgers will have the ball at their own 48, and with two big penalties against Army, they get into excellent field position. Hooper stacked up at the line of scrimmage, and the assault was led again by Jim Gentile. Army uses a seven-man front. That's the way uh, Frank Burns described it, a seven-man front with multiple looks. When you ask them what they use on defense, they say a 5-2, but they move people around. Sometimes they're in a 4-3, a 3-4. The two inside linebackers, however, on that last play and on several previous plays, playing extremely deep, far off the line. I'd run right at the middle of that defense. Look how far those uh, linebackers are off the line. Second down and 11, Andrew Baker comes in motion to the left, LaPrairie, play action pass. Scrambling out of the pocket, LaPrairie looking, keeps the football. He's into Army territory, he's at the 45 yard line, and he's stripped up at the 43, and again, a flag is down on the play. A late play. Sometimes when a team is hitting, when they've come ready to play and they're aggressive you're going to get penalties the army penalties have been rather foolish however once again the prairie sets up they got a four-man rush four people coming at him sees that uh, defensive end coming from the outside elects to run with a football he might have had time to throw it if he had seen someone downfield but picks up good yardage on the ground of course the penalty gives him excellent field position it is another 15-yard penalty dead ball foul late hit against the cadets and rutgers has now gotten 45 yards in penalties in this drive. They have first and 10 at the Army 27-yard line. They have more in penalties than they do in rushing and passing yardage at this point. Here's the late hit. The Prairie That's down. No that was a spearing hit, too. He hit him with his helmet and his shoulder pad. On first down, the Prairie back to throw. Blitz is on, and the pass is complete, intended for Allen Andrews. Excellent coverage on the play by Eric Griffin and Gary Baskin. Well, pass thrown a little bit behind Andrews. He had to reach for it, exposing those ribs and giving the defensive back a clean shot at him. Had the pass been thrown on target, they would have had a completion. He, uh, he was free as the ball approached. No gain. Second down and 10. Wide to the left, Morris Pendergrass. Wide to the right, Andrew Baker. Off to Dwayne Hooper. Hooper carries a couple of people. He gets eight or nine yards on his own. Good effort. Jim Jennings made the tackle. Jennings, a junior from North Brunswick, New Jersey. Jim Jennings, when uh, they asked the coach during the week at the press conference about Jennings, he said that they really didn't know who he was because they have 180 kids on this Army football team, including the junior varsity, and all of a sudden Jennings appeared. He still has a long way to go, but he's played well for them. Third and two. Ball at the 19-yard line of Army. Will House backfield, Vernon Williams has stopped to die in the first down. First time today, Williams has gotten the football. Last week against Penn State, he carried the ball only one time for three yards, and now he gets only a yard. It'll be fourth and short. Yeah, that was a trap option where the quarterback has the option of handing off the ball or keeping it. See how far those defensive uh, inside linebackers are playing off the line of scrimmage. Then, of course, as the ball is snapped, their first step is toward the line of scrimmage, and they come up and fill the holes, and that time they did quite well. Fourth and one, Rutgers will go for it. Full house backfield, it's a T. Two tight ends, Drake and Andrews. LaFrary options, keeps it, nice move, first down. Great individual move. The quarterback has the option to pitch or keep LaPrairie red perfectly. Fakes to the fullback, or he can hand off to the fullback, and then, of course, moves down the line of scrimmage. They would like to uh, get the quarterback to pitch out the ball. You saw the fake to Vernon Williams has the option of pitching to uh, the tailback, uh, Albert Smith, and he wisely held it himself because there was no one directly in front of him. 243 first quarter of play. Army 7, Rutgers nothing. The Scarlet Knights with first and 10 at the Army 15. Out of the eye with Hooper, the tailback. The Prairie options to the right. Keeps it. He's at the 10. He spins away from one man, and he gets eight yards. 
One thing Jack LaFerry does exceptionally well is run the football. Once again, the option play, that trap option with uh, Clement Yudovich, the offensive guard pulling out, leading interference for the Prairie. He turns up at, a, at the area of about the uh, tight end, just outside the offensive tackle where he originally lined up, looks to the inside and picks up one of those inside linebackers coming in pursuit. Good job by Yudovich. Second down and two at the seven. Full house backfield again. Hooper. Maybe a yard on the play. A wave of black shirts hit on the tackle, and I wouldn't want to start guessing who was the first to make the hit. Rutgers continuing to alternate their tailback, Dwayne uh, Hooper and Albert Smith. And of course, uh, that's one of the keys to football today. Get the most out of all of your people. Use the formations that each one runs best, and not only with the tailback, but with just about everybody on your offensive unit. That, that's the, one of the advantages of uh, multiplicity or multiple formations. Utilize all your people to their best advantage. Now they're both in the backfield together along with Vernon Williams on third and short. The Prairie play action pass throws and it's incomplete. Alan Andrews was all by himself in the end zone. The Prairie held the defensive linebackers with the fake. Andrews got free, but the ball was frankly underthrown. Lined up in a full house backfield, announcing their intention to run with the football, and certainly he had Alan Andrews downfield. All he had to do was just loft the football. Instead, he tried to put too much on it. Put, he did put too much on it and threw it directly into the ground. So Rutgers on fourth and short will try a field goal. Tom Angstadt comes on for the Scarlet Knights. Angstadt, eight for 10 on the season in the field goal department. This will be a 24-yard attempt. Keith Hudak will hold. Ball placed down, the kick is up, and the kick is perfect. So Tom Angstadt continues his outstanding field goals this year. Nine for 11 now, Rutgers on the scoreboard. One minute, five seconds left in the first quarter of play. Army leads Rutgers by a score of seven to three. This is Rutgers football on Madison Square Garden Cable Vision. Precision passing, solid defense, and breakaway action. The system as used by Coach Herb Brooks and the New York Rangers has made NHL opponents sit up and take notice. And you'll sit up and take notice when the system for your favorite sports teams, Madison Square Garden Cable Vision, once again brings you all Rangers home games live from the Garden. For exclusive New York Rangers home action all season long, it's Madison Square Garden Cable Vision. Keep up to date on all the high school action in the metropolitan area each week on the Daily News High School Sports Show. Hi, I'm Bruce Beck. Join Bill Travers and me on Madison Square Garden Cablevision every Monday night at 7 p.m. with repeat telecast Wednesday and Friday evenings also at 7 p.m. Highlights, rankings, features, and much more on the Daily News High School Sports Show. You can see in the background part of the Corps of Cadets estimated that 4,000 will attend today's game. They are encouraged to attend each and every home football game. So far today, Sam, not much defense, a lot of offense. Yes, of course, Rutgers came into today's game 12th in the nation in passing offense, averaging 238 yards a game. Angstead's kick is handled by Kevin McKelvey. McKelvey's at the 15-yard line. And McKelvey gets across the 25, where Army will start out first and 10. And there's a young man enjoying all the festivities and perhaps a future cadet. Well, they, uh, they certainly enjoy their football here at West Point. We arrived about two and a half hours prior to game time, and most of the lots were already full, unless there's a tremendous traffic jam after the game. And maybe that's why they arrived so early, but everyone was here two hours before the game. First and 10 Army, 25-yard line. Elton Akins gets the call. Akins hits the right side, gets three yards on the play, and it will be second down and seven. That last Rutgers scoring drive, they were able to move the ball down the field but did have to settle for the field goal by Angstad. 10 plays, 61 yards. And, of course, that has hurt Rutgers throughout the season. They have not been able to punch it in. There are some of the substitutes for the Black Knights of Army. I don't know if they're ever going to get in the game, though. Second down and call at seven. Straight up the middle. Number 38, Dave Pratt. He is the backup fullback, a sophomore from El Paso, Texas. 
Had only six carries coming into today's ball game, and Jeff Cardillo and George Piquel made the tackle. Yes, there is indeed a lot of pageantry all over this stadium. And I'm certain that Ted Cottrell, the defensive coordinator for Rutgers, told his people to stop overreacting, especially those linebackers and defensive ends, and coming into the middle too quickly, allowing Aiken to break to the outside. They have been able to stop the Army running attack up the middle. It has been to the outside that they've been hurt by Aiken. Well, the clock has run down. That is the end of the first quarter of play. When we come back, it will be third and three for Army. They lead in this football game seven to three. We'll be back in a moment. Back at Mikey Stadium, it will be third and three for Army. The cadets lead this football game seven to three. A lot of happy faces so far at Mikey Stadium. We had a lot of offense in that first quarter, but very little defense. Wide to the left side comes Jarvis Hollingsworth. The rest of the club fairly tight. Split backs on third and three. Aiken sweeps the left side. Flag down. Aikens has a first down at the 43, but a flag was thrown back at the 31-yard line. Tyrone Stowe was in on the tackle for the Scarlet Knights. That time, a good block by right offensive tackle Carl Heinemann for Army on Bob Dumont. That's what made the play run uh, go. That was the... Well, that play was designed to go to the outside. The blocking was down on the part of the offensive line, and he had good running room to the outside. Flag is called against Army. Preliminary call holding, so that'll bring the ball back to the 27-yard line. Illegal motion is the call. Third down. So it will be third down and eight. Third and eight from the 27-yard line. Hollingsworth comes left this time. And Scott Spellman goes wide right. Laughlin still the quarterback. Hands the ball off to William Lampley. And Lampley is stopped short of a first down. Lampley getting to the 31-yard line or so. Matt Bachman made the stop for Rutgers. And it was Jeff Cordilla that broke into the backfield, almost brought the ball carrier down for a loss. He did slow him up and allowed his teammates to come up and make the tackle. Well, penalties have definitely hurt Army so far in this football game. They had three big ones before. They have four in the game for 50 yards. And that last one at an inopportune time. Quick snap, Sardiano boots it away. James Shedneck chases it back to his own 17-yard line. Shedneck sidesteps the man, gets to the 30 but he stepped out of bounds at the 24, and that's where Rutgers will have to start first and 10. 13.59 left second quarter of play. Army on top of the Scarlet Knights, seven to three. Kenny, first and 10 Rutgers from their own 23 yard line. Andrew Baker goes wide to the right, wide to the left, Hender Grant. And off. Albert Smith. Smith running on a trap play. Stopped by Herb Ayton, but Smith picking up nine yards. Big hole in the middle of that uh, offensive line. Key blocked by, well, I guess everybody blocked well when you have a hole that, uh, that size. Joe Panucci, however, the right offensive tackle, had a fine block on uh, the inside linebacker, Jim uh, Gentili. They'll bring the chains on. Yeah, Sardiano, the punter for Army, had the win with him on that last punt, which went for 55 yards. However, he's been averaging 41.5 yards per punt this season. Short of a first down. It will be second down and inches. I would run right at the middle of that Army uh, defense. They're not big. The front three is rather small. They average, well, 220, 235, and 230 pounds. Rutgers has the size. I just run right at the middle of that line. Out of the eye formation, LaPrairie play action pass. Flag down on the play, throwing long for Baker. And it is intercepted. Herb Ayton, number 28, back there in coverage, and he picks up the football. A flag is down. Back near the line of scrimmage. 
Poor decision by Jack LaFrary to throw that football. He's throwing against the wind. He, this is thrown up for grabs. Army in a zone most of the time, about 60% of the time. He knew he would have people down there. And you can see the ball gets hung up in the wind. No chance of a uh, completion and a good chance of an interception on the tip off. Herb Aiton picks it off. Aiton, a senior from Princeville, Illinois. The illegal motion penalty was called against Rutgers, so Army takes over. You don't over. take chances like that. There had to be a shorter man, someone that he could have reached or thrown safely to. 33-yard line, first and 10. Aiken hits the right side, breaks away from a couple of people, fumbles the football, but the play was blown dead. So it will be second down. Army will keep possession from their own 37-yard line. Aikens has been the workhorse. Sam, here's first quarter statistics. See the difference as Army has controlled the football on the ground, 72 yards rushing. Rutgers just hasn't been able to do anything in that first quarter. Total of 13 yards. The penalty yards assessed against Army, 45. Well, you might want to throw that into the Rutgers offense if you want to figure out how they got their field goal. Laughlin back to throw, overthrows his receiver. William Lampley was wide open in the flat, and the ball was overthrown, and it was also from short of the intended tight end, Rob Dickerson. Mentioned that Laughlin started five games in 1982, went 53 for 122. This year, he was one for five for just 21 yards prior to this game through one pass in the Louisville game, which went for an interception. That's a game that Army lost 31 to seven, where they turned the football over nine times. Lag down on the play. Jim Dumont talking to Thomas Stammert, our referee today, and they will assess some more yards against the Black Knights. Back the ball goes to the 27-yard line. Hold it. And of course, that changes everything. And I guess the evidence of that is that different people are coming into the football game. Second down, 17 for the cadets from their own 27-yard line. Split receivers both sides of the field. Laughlin pitches back to Aikens. Aikens is wrapped up at the 25, and Joe Corbin just ran over his man and got the ball carried. Yeah, Rutgers played that well as they did the first sweep of this drive going to the other side. They are no longer overreacting coming into the middle of the defense too quickly. Everybody keeping equidistant from each other and literally trying to establish that picket fence around the football. Third and long, third and 19 now from the 25-yard line. Laughlin with an obvious passing down. Keeps it on the ground, hands off to Travis Jackson, and Travis Jackson gets to the 30, 31-yard line, and that is all. So Rutgers has held with some help from a couple of penalties, and Army will have to punt it away. Once again, good defense by Rutgers. Army came into this game with a slight change in their offensive thinking. They had been running primarily from the eye. There's Lionel Washington. See the, uh, the guard once again had pulled. Number 62 was out there blocking on him. He did a good job of disengaging and getting into the line of pursuit. Sardiano boots it away. James Shedneck calls for a fair catch, and Rutgers will start from their own 25-yard line. 11 minutes, 32 seconds left in the first half. Army on top of Rutgers. Seven to three. Now, playing on ColecoVision, Mr. Do and Time Pilot, two of the best new arcade games for the best system made. This is Time Pilot, a battle with aircraft from the past and the future. Homing missile. Got him. Uh-oh. Blue bomber. And this is Mr. Do. Mow a path to his fruit and start picking, but don't get picked off. Powerball. Nice shot. Mr. Do and Time Pilot, now playing on ColecoVision. The best system in town keeps getting better. W, any W. Sinatra and Tommy, where all the big bands play. The place where swing was born, the home of Lena Horn. 11 3 oh, in New York. W-E-W, 11-3-0, where the melody lingers on. Chris Beck and Sam DeLuca back at West Point with Army leading Rutgers 7-3 and the Scarlet Knights on first and 10 for their own 25. 
Jack LaFrary in there at quarterback for Rutgers. Options to his right. LaFrary hangs on to the ball. Has five, has a first down. He's up to the 38, and he is really hit by two or three Army players. Larry Carroll led the assault. Carroll, number 89, was second team All East last year, and this year is fourth on the team with 36 tackles. He has been injured somewhat and hasn't played throughout the season, but no doubt that he is their best down lineman. Tough against the rush, has good speed. He also has three interceptions this season off of the rush. He doesn't drop back into pass coverage. First down, Rutgers. Ball just over the 38. Albert Smith in there at tailback now behind Vernon Williams. Williams gets the call straight up the middle, a couple of yards. And it will bring up second down and seven. No, that's Tony Beleza, excuse me. Beleza, 39, sophomore, North Brunswick, New Jersey. Now, last week against Penn State, Rutgers had 448 total yards. They went behind 14 to three, but they kept coming back. In fact, at one point, led 16 to 14. And of course, the game wasn't put away until the final six minutes, having more trouble today in moving that football. Second down, seven. They keep the ball on the ground, straight up the middle. Albert Smith breaks a couple tackles, and Smith, on his own, looks like he has a first down. Well, the Army defense may be a little gun shy because of all those penalties. It looks as if they have Smith bottled up. Watch this. Two people around him, but nobody brings him down, and Smith wisely, or certainly deserves praise for it, doesn't go down. There are some running backs who would go down in that situation when they feel themselves surrounded, trying to avoid injuries or fumbles. He gave it the second effort and got five more yards on the play. First and 10, ball at the 50-yard line. Straight up the middle, Peleza fumbles the ball, Army recovers. Larry Carroll had the first shot at it, and the ball was picked up by Gary Bastian, the senior from Saxonburg, Pennsylvania. So Rutgers coughs up the ball around the midfield strike. Good block by John Owens there. You see him folding, coming on the inside linebacker. He wasn't hit hard. Beleza was not hit hard. Just one of those arms uh, of one of the inside linebackers, Roney, I believe, that just dislodged the football. That's not supposed to happen, of course. So Army takes over from their own 43. 9.50 left second quarter, 7-3 Army lead. Back to throw, Rob Healy, and he swings it out to Art Zerone, the fullback. Zerone to the 49-yard line. A pick of a six, Jim Dumont made the tackle. So Coach Jim Young has gone back to Rob Healy, sophomore quarterback, number seven, from Arcadia, California. He was the number one quarterback coming into the fall, but he's been bothered by injuries. Left shoulder really hurt him coming into this week of practice, but he appears to be okay. And he is now in the ball game, replacing Laughlin. Second down, Aiken. Close to a first down. Bill Houston, Jim Dumas made the stop. Well, on a day like today where the wind is certainly a factor, you want a quarterback, ideally, that can run with a football and make things happen. And that's exactly what Rob Hilly has been able to do for the Army team last uh, week. Uh, he engineered two 80-yard drives, one leading to a touchdown, was 11 of 16 for 183 yards. What's that touchdown? Very impressive for statistics. And it is a first down for Army. I saw Healy practice yesterday. I was watching the Army club work out, and he was favoring the left shoulder. The coaches called it a left shoulder strain. But apparently he's well enough to play. The ball right now in the middle of the crest. That's the United States Military Academy crest in the middle of the football field. Aikens with 62 yards already today. Here's Aikens again, the workhorse. 14th time he's gotten the football. Runs into George Fakel, and he gets only a half a yard. Almost missed that handoff. It looked as if there was a little bit of confusion, or at least Healy or Aiken perhaps maybe took a... a too deep a path to take that handoff, but certainly Huey did not want to reach to give him the football as he did on that last play. Yeah, let's see how the quarterback Rob Huey now has to reach out and give him that ball. That's dangerous. Second down nine, Healy, bootleg action, puts the ball up, and he throws, and it's intercepted by Phil Houston. Houston continues to run, but apparently his knee touched the 
artificial turf. And let's see if they counted an incomplete pass or an interception. They say incompleted pass, so Army will keep possession. Well, I didn't see the football hit the ground. Now, it's one thing to run with a football and another thing to run and make things happen. Watch Huey have the presence of mind not to continue to run as he sees his receiver downfield open. Let's see if that ball hits the ground. Hard to tell. I didn't think it hit the uh, the turf, but obviously no, was com uh, no one was complaining, especially Bill Houston. So perhaps it did hit the turf. Third and nine. Jarvis Hollingsworth wide to the left. Three receivers in the ball game. Healy straight drop back. In trouble. Pursued by Harry Swain. And Healy throws at the last moment and it's intercepted but out of bounds. Healy is quick, doesn't he? He runs well. They said he ran well. And you can see uh, that when he moves, he does it with quickness. And he's poised and he's under control. And and that's, of course, what you want to do. It doesn't help to have a quarterback who can run with a football unless he can think, unless he's decisive, and unless he makes the right decision as to what to do with that football ultimately when he is running. If he runs every time, there's no great advantage. Watch the quick snap now. Army's been able to get the punt away very quickly as Joe Sardiano stands at his own 43. Sardiano looking for the coffin corner. May get it. The ball goes out of bounds at the Rutgers four. So the Scarlet Knights with their back to the end zone will start from the four-yard line with seven minutes and 54 seconds left in this first half. Army 7, Rutgers 3 from Mikey Stadium in West Point, New York. This is Rutgers football on Madison Square Garden Cablevision. Legends to Living Rooms in the World of Sports now also presents diversified entertainment programming, including classic television spy adventures with Patrick McNee and Diana Rigg in The Avengers, trendsetters of the art, fashion, and music world on Andy Warhol's TV, and some of the biggest names in the entertainment world with The Jonathan Schwartz Show, all on the Madison Square Garden Network. Consult your local listings for time and channel or contact your local cable system. More and more people are coming to Madison Square Garden in groups because of the convenience in reserving seats and special savings. If you have a group of 25 or more, you can get assistance from our group sales department. This applies to the circus, the Bugs Bunny Sports Spectacular, plus dozens of sports and entertainment events in Madison Square Garden and the Felt Forum. Call the Garden's group sales office at 212-563-8080. That's 212-563-8080. Seven fifty-four to go. First half. Army has been in control right from the beginning. They lead seven-three. Rutgers starting deep in their own territory at the four. The Prairie on first down, straight up the middle to Vernon Williams, and the sophomore fullback from Amherst, Massachusetts, runs it to John Roney and picks up a couple of yards. That's when you're backed up to your goal line like that. There really isn't much choice. There isn't much an offensive unit can do except to try to get some yards up the middle. Quarterback keeps the ball on an option, and of course there is the possibility of being thrown for a loss. Drops back to pass. Again, the possibility of a sack or an interception, and it's just a difficult call. You've got to get some breathing room. Second down and seven. The Prairie option keeps the ball. And carries that ball like a pumpkin, doesn't he? Gets to the 12. I don't like seeing a quarterback, or I would think any coach wouldn't like uh -huh. seeing a quarterback carry the ball like that. So close to your own goal, Sam. He seemed to get too deep that time. John Owens, the guard, once again pulling. And I watch out when Owens turns up, there is running room. If the Prairie were behind Owens, he would have been able to break to the outside for good yardage. For some reason, he got too deep, lost track of that offensive guard who had a pretty good block on the play. Third down and two at the 12. Hooper remains the tailback. Williams the fullback. The Prairie pitches out to Hooper. Has a blocking in front of him. Hooper has a first down. Hooper up to the 20-yard line. Eric Griffin, a junior from Bartow, Florida, came up to make the stop. Griffin missed last week's game with a hip pointer, but he's back this week, and the entire defensive unit is pretty much intact. Clement Yudovich, somewhat undersized as an offensive guard for Rutgers, but uh, certainly does an outstanding job when pulling. Once again, he was leading interference, had a good block on the play. Rutgers has been running almost exclusively on first down. First and 10 from the 20. Hooper. Couple yards, Army was blitzing on the play. Larry Carroll was there to manhandle Hooper. 
is an aggressive football player is Larry Carroll. He had 13 tackles last week against Harvard, second team all East last year. And as we indicated, he has three interceptions this year, which is rather remarkable for a defensive end, especially when he's not playing it like an outside linebacker. He said uh, all three came uh, from tip-ups as he was rushing the passer and actually caught the football or tipped it and then caught it. Second down and seven. LaFrary, option, find some running room. Jack to the 30. LaFrary has a first down, and he's across the 40 to the 42-yard line. Nice option play. Jack LaFrary has run that play effectively twice today, and Rutgers with good field position. And they've run it far more often than twice. Maybe perhaps not for great yardage. Once again, Clement Yudovich out there in front of him. You see a gaping hole. No one is pressing LaFrary forcing him to option off the football, to pitch out the football, and that's ideally what the defense would want to do. They want to go ahead and force the quarterback to pitch and not turn up field as LaPrairie is doing. First and 10 from the 42-yard line. 5-10 left first half, Rutgers trailing 7-3. Hand off to Dwayne Hooper, fumbles the ball, and Army recovers. Second time today, Rutgers has coughed up the football and the cadets with excellent scoring opportunities at the Rutgers 40. Second fumble of the day, and of course, this is something you can't do and win football games. It's the mistakes that determine the outcome of most football games. Didn't see how he got hit or why he should have fumbled the ball. But as he, before he hit the ground, he fumbled it, evidently an arm, once again, knocking or dislodging the football. Big difference in this football game, turnover. First and ten, Gilly. Oh, Scrambling out of the pocket, still looking. Gilly throws and it's incomplete. In and out of the hands of Elton Aiken. Tyrone Stowe back in coverage. Tyrone Stowe is going to play most of the football game at linebacker, replacing Mercer Hedgeman. Stowe is just a freshman from the State High School in the State, New Jersey. Aiken should have held on to that football. Pass was right on target. And of course, we indicated he was a wide receiver last year, so he has some more experience or more practice in catching the football. And if you're going to throw the football, this is the time with the wind at your back. Aiken hit by Houston, stopped by Stowe. It will bring up a third down and short. By the way, at halftime, the 1958 Army football team will be honored. That was the last Army team to win the Lambert Trophy, indicative of the best football team in the East. They were 8-0-1 that year with outstanding players like All-American Heisman Trophy winner Pete Dawkins, Bob Anderson, and a gentleman by the name of Bill Carpenter, who was known as the Lonely Ant. Sam will talk more about that at halftime, so stay with us. Third down and eight. Healy, straight drop back, has time, steps to the pocket, but the ball is deflected at the line of scrimmage by Lionel Washington. Big splits on the part of the Army offensive line. I imagine before long we're going to see some people on the Rutgers defensive line of linebackers shooting those gaps. Let's watch uh, Jeff Cordilla now. He's been playing outstanding football. However, he was blocked clean on that last play by number 62, Carl Heinemann, the right offensive tackle for Army. Here's Craig Stopa, who will attempt a 55-yard field goal, his career farthest 50 yards away. Ball placed down, Stopa hits it straight ahead, but it is no good. He had the distance, but it is wide to the right. So Army comes up empty after a Rutgers miscue. And the Scarlet Knights will get the ball out near the 38-yard line, trailing 7-3 with 4.07 to play. Well, Rutgers looking to break their losing streak today. Next week, the Scarlet Knights will be back at Rutgers Stadium. It's been a while. It's been since the first victory against Connecticut. And next week, they'll take on the Colgate Red Raiders, ranked number two in the nation in Division I AA football. Homecoming weekend, you'll see it next week at 10.30 p.m. with a rebroadcast Sunday morning at 9. First and 10 Rutgers, 38-yard line, and Albert Smith gets the call on first down, and Smith dances to the 46-yard line before Larry Carroll knocked him down. Well, as expected, because of the win, Rutgers continues to run with a football. And of course, Army doesn't situation substitute, so there's really no reason to pass on first down when the other team always has the same people in the football game and pretty much the same fronts. 
coming down and short. Prairie option. Back to Smith. Smith looking to turn the corner. Upended close to the midfield stripe. Looks like he has a first down. Eric Griffin made the tackle. Only a matter of time before that Army defense was about to uh, converge on Jack LaPrairie and force him to pitch out. Watch a couple of people now. The linebacker number 55 and also number 98 coming up on LaPrairie, forcing him to pitch to Albert Smith, who gets pretty good yardage on the play. At number 81, Andrew Baker picked up a block downfield. He might have had additional yardage. 3-12 to go, first half, Army 7, Rutgers 3. Rutgers with first and 10 at the 50. The Prairie again keeps the football. And he's dragged down by John Roney, a junior from Yorba Linda, California. He made 15 stops last week against Dartmouth and 13 against Harvard. Offensive line for Rutgers uh, starting to take control. I, I think they've had pretty much control of the line of scrimmage from the start. Rutgers just making mistakes. The two fumbles, the one interception, but they have uh, had good yardage on the ground. That time, once again, the offensive guard, John Owens, pulling on the play and uh, getting a good block. And I think that George DeLeon gets some credit. The offensive line coach uh, just a couple of inches short for Rutgers on the measurement, but uh, Frank Burns was crediting George DeLeon uh, for doing an outstanding job with that offensive line for Rutgers. So they really don't have exceptional ability or exceptional experience. A lot of them just coming in and playing for the first time this year. I uh, mentioned that Udovich was somewhat undersized, but they're working well as a unit. You saw La Prairie's rushing statistics. He's only thrown four passes today and completed one. He's done most of his work on the ground. Second down at inches. Albert Smith, first down, Rutgers inside the 40-yard line. Clock ticks down, 2.28 remaining in the first half. Rutgers trailing by four. While we have this opportunity, on behalf of the entire Madison Square Garden Cablevision team, I'd like to wish Rutgers University Athletic Director Fred Gruninger a speedy recovery. Fred is at Middlesex General University Hospital recovering from recent surgery. And Fred, on behalf of everyone, our entire crew, we wish you a speedy recovery. During the week, Frank Burns said that Middlesex Hospital was reunion quarters, or headquarters <laughs> for the Rutgers football team. Uh, Fred Greninger in the hospital. Eric Cockberg had uh, both cruciates shattered last week, had his knee rebuilt. Deschner had a scope in the early part of the week, an arthroscope on the knee, and there was a freshman that had a concussion, so there were quite, quite a few people hospitalized at Middlesex. It's really not the best place for a reunion, though, is it? No, I guess not. This is the best place today for that Army reunion. Army, meanwhile, has been really decimated by injuries all week long. As a matter of fact, people have been making comparisons to the MASH television program because of so many players really in bad condition. Here we go, first and 10 Rutgers, 38-yard line of Army. The Prairie. Pitches back to Albert Smith. Smith cuts inside, fumbles the ball. And Army recovers for the third time today. Rutgers has fumbled the ball and Army has recovered. It's been three different players. Well, this is usually when a running back fumbles the football. When he's making that second effort, watch once again Udovich turning up field, getting a block. He's forced to pitch it out. Smith makes an excellent cutback here. Still has possession. He should have tucked the football away. He was hit from the blind side, did not see the defender coming up on him, did not have the ball tucked away, hence the fumble. Four turnovers in the football game against Rutgers. None for Army. Army leads seven to three. Rutgers has not had a problem fumbling the ball coming into today's game. Akins gets it on first down, and he has swarmed under. Number 20, Dan Perico led the charge. Some help from Harry Swain and Jeff Cordilla. Uh, defensive coordinator for Army, Bob Sutton, said that he felt that uh, the Rutgers team was the best that they've seen this year, both balance and ability to make the big play. Second down and eight. Option, Healy, back to throw. Healy has time, throws incomplete. And of course, speaking of big plays, the man that made many of those big plays for Rutgers in their preceding games this season was Eric Cockburg, who had been just outstanding at quarterback. Uh, very, very impressive. 
You know, Sam, if there was one area that Rutgers was weak coming into today's game, it was in the defensive secondary. And I was talking yesterday to Earl Mosley, who works with the defensive backs, and he says we just have been in the right position, but we haven't made the right play. Today, they have been doing excellent coverage on pass plays. Third down and eight. Draw. Keeping the ball is William Lampley. And Lampley bites out close to a first down at the 43. Harry Swain, Matt Bachman made the stop for Rutgers. Of course, Army has not thrown the football very often, but you see it is a draw play. See the offensive line setting up as if it were a pass and then just trying to wheel their man out. I believe you saw a little bit of holding on the part of number 66, Ron Roish, on number 90, Harry Swain, uh, but it wasn't called. Swain is another freshman. He's from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So Rutgers going with Swain and Tyrone Stowe, two freshmen at difficult positions. One linebacker, the other right tackle. The offensive guard had Swain uh, hooked. He had that arm hooked. But he did let loose. He didn't hold on for dear life, and that's probably why it wasn't called. And then again, the official doesn't see everything, of course. A minute 23 left in the half. I think you heard Thomas Stammert say, not even close. That was a measurement that was not even near to the marker. So Must pretty faces here in the crowd today. Rutgers called a timeout. They want to get the ball back. Fourth and one for Army at the 43-yard line. Rutgers trailing the football game seven to three. This program is authorized by Madison Square Garden Productions Incorporated, solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this event, including the imposition of a charge for viewing the program without the express written consent of Madison Square Garden Productions Incorporated is prohibited. Now there's our spotter with a mask over his face. The problem is sometimes the, the holes for his eyes get covered up. We get a little bit confused. Another quick snap. Joe Sarniano hits another beauty. Angles to the sideline. Gets most of it. And Rutgers will take over at the 13-yard line. So Rutgers, with a minute 15 left in the first half, trails in the football game 7-3. And they have a long way to go if they're going to put some more points in the board. Well, they've got a long way to go, and they've got some problems because ideally they would want to keep the football on the ground because of the wind they're throwing into the wind. I don't think there's any doubt about that, and there just isn't enough time to run with the football. So if they do intend to score, and that's the decision they have to make, they've got to put it in the air. Andrew Baker has been quiet today. Baker with zero receptions. He goes wide to the left. First and 10 for Jack LaPrairie. Keeps the ball on the ground. Maybe a couple of yards right up the middle. Albert Smith stopped by Mike Staver, a junior from Lamar's, Indiana. It's probably a wise decision because throwing into this wind is a problem, although I would expect him to throw on this uh, down. Andrew Baker coming into today's game with 17 catches, averaging 27 yards per reception. So far today, all Kuse. Second and nine, Albert Smith. Smith gets to the 19-yard line. Fine individual tackle by Larry Carroll. Well, last year against Army, Rutgers dominated the ground game uh, with over 200 yards, Army had just six yards rushing against Rutgers last season. Well, this Army unit attracts players from all over the country because it is a military academy. There are obviously players that will attend because they want to go into the United States Military Academy. They have players on this club from Texas, California, Arizona, Indiana, New Jersey, Florida, Illinois. And the first half is complete. All the scoring in our first quarter. Army leading Rutgers 7-3. to three. Well, I think that uh, Rutger, Rutgers is fortunate to be down just 7-3 to three after fumbling the football three times and throwing an interception. Okay, 7-3. Cadets will be back with our halftime show in a moment. Nike Stadium, West Point, New York. Gorgeous afternoon for football. There are all the... Silver helmets, 80 of them. 80 of them in a, a circle, no more than 10 feet in diameter. <laughs> they got together. Now, there are a lot of statistics up here. I was talking to 
one of the freshmen yesterday. They were they're called plebes here at West Point, and I was I was asking him how many gallons of water are in the adjacent Lusk Reservoir because it's one of the questions huh. on their freshman exams. And he said 72 million gallons of water. Well, I'm not about to dispute that. It's a lovely setting, though, the Lusk Reservoir, which is right over the back of Mikey Stadium. A matter of fact, I ran around that reservoir two or three times yesterday, Sam, getting ready for today's game. That must have been fun. <laughs> I Great missed, history. I missed you, I really did. <laughs> Great tradition here at Army. Of course, they had uh, outstanding teams back in the 40s and 50s, and and then suddenly the emphasis and other problems. And uh, in recent years, of course, they have been struggling. A new head coach this year, Jim Young, and he has a uh, fairly impressive track record, but he's having some problems here at Army, although they very well could be three and one coming into today's game instead of one and three. Okay, we're just about set to go for the second half. Craig Stopa tees the ball up. Stopa from Prospect, Kentucky, a 6'2 sophomore. Led club in scoring last year with 52 points, and again leads the club in scoring this year with 18. Back deep, Len Beleza, number 39 near side. James Shedneck, the man in the middle. Matter of fact, Shedneck ranked sixth in the nation in returns. Still 30 minutes of football to play. Army leads Rutgers seven and seven to three. Rutgers committed four turnovers in the first 30 minutes of play. Short kick. Handled by Danny Errico at the eight yard line. Errico finds a hole. He's at the 30. And Errico is knocked down at the 32 yard line. Rutgers starts from there, first and 10. The last five times Rutgers has had the football, you can see what happened. Very poor result. As you just can't turn over the football, one of the problems that Army had last week, they turned the football over three times in the fourth quarter. Two interceptions and a fumble and eventually lost to Harvard 24 to 21. Rutgers tries to snap a three game losing streak. First and 10, 32 yard line. LaPrairie the quarterback. Vernon Williams, Albert Smith in the backfield. Smith gets the pitch. Smith straight up the middle. Breaks a tackle, he's at the 50. Smith at the 30 yard line is finally knocked down by Eric Griffin who catches Albert from behind but not before Smith broke a long one. I think Albert Smith was somewhat surprised that he was caught from behind. Watch the pitch out now, breaking toward the line. Ideal situation for the running back to be in sloppy tackling, poor tackling on the part of Army, especially at the line of scrimmage there. And there you see Eric Griffin, number 18, running down Albert Smith from behind. Smith, nine carries, 84 yards in the football game. Rutgers first and 10 at the Army 27. Vernon Williams, straight up the middle, behind Joe DeGilio, the center, and the right guard, John Owens, getting three or four yards off the right side. Tackle made by Jim Gentilly and Jim Jennings. Of course, with Eric Cockburg out for the season, and a win here at Army, at Mikey Stadium, really a factor today. I think that Frank Burns would like to keep the football on, a, on the ground and run as effectively as they have on these first two plays. Second down and six. Four-man front now used by Army. Albert Smith dances inside, dances outside, goes down. Rob Olsey, backup nose guard there to lead the charge, and it will bring bring up a third down and six. One of the advantages of that, it's, it's a pitch out. He's not handing off the ball to Smith. He's not meeting him and putting it into uh, the midsection. He's actually turning and pitching it back to Smith is that he has a good view, good vision of the entire defense and he can pick his hole. Third down, call it seven. La Prairie, straight drop back. Swings it out to Albert Smith. And Smith is run out of bounds by Mike Newsom, the junior from Glendale, Arizona. Short of a first down, it will bring up fourth. And about five. A screen pass uh, on the part of Rutgers offense, but Mike Newsom, who is starting for the first time this season, read it perfectly. One of the offensive linemen obviously didn't do a good job in uh, in faking uh, the pass, and 
He was right out there, Newsom was, with the ball carry. Tom Angstad comes on for Rutgers. Angstad, 9 of 11 on this season. His longest, 49 yards. This will be a 40-yard field goal attempt. Keith Hudak will hold. Ball placed down, kick is up. And it hits the post and goes over. So Angstad, two for two on the day, and Rutgers again closes to one point. Hit the supporting rod right in the middle, and it, al it had already carried over. So the Scarlet Knights cut the lead to one. 13 minutes left, third quarter of play. Seven to six, Army leads Rutgers. 13 minutes left, third quarter. The Corps of Cadets stand the entire duration of the football game, 4,000 strong. And right now they're trying to get their team fired up. Up 7-3 at the half, now 7-6. Angstad puts it into play for Rutgers. Elton Akers, he's dangerous, and he gets the football at the goal line. Akers at the 20 and gets to the 22-yard line before he's knocked down. Tackle made by Jim Pakel, and Army will start out first and 10. Akins coming into today's game, returning kicks so very well on the season, averaging 23.8 per return. Scarlet Knight scoring drive quick. Four plays, 44 yards, a minute 53. Angstead gets the field goal, his second of the day. Healy hands off a first down to Aikens. Watch out, he's going to put it up. Throwing long for Hollingsworth. Hollingsworth has it at the 20, and he is gone. Touchdown, Army. The option pass to perfection. Elton Aiken to Jarvis Hollingsworth. Well, Rutgers should have been prepared for it because Aikens has thrown that pass three times this season. He's completed two. He completed one for 39 yards last week against Harvard. They caught Carl Howard napping. You'll see that Hollingsworth has a step or two on him. Now, they fake this very well. It looks as if he's going to run. He pulls up, unloads the football. He's got the wind in his back. Very important in that situation. And really a, a picture-perfect pass. It didn't look like Hollingsworth had to slow up for the football. Hollingsworth goes 78 yards for the score. Stopa adds the point after touchdown. And quicker than you can say, Elton Aiken. The Army Black Knights are back on the scoreboard. 12.43 left, third quarter, 14-6 Army. That used to be us, always rushing. Right. And that used to be us, always standing in line. Right. On DWA, we got our return trip boarding passes on our flight out, so we go straight to the gate. Right. We even reserved our favorite seats in advance. Right. And nobody can get you through the airport faster than TWA. Right. Since we have our seats together, we can work together. Wrong. The name Buick has always stood for automobiles that are well above the ordinary. Automobiles that are engineered for a quiet, smooth ride, designed for comfort and convenience, and built to make you feel good about your car as long as you own it. Maybe that's why, in the last seven years, over five million discriminating people have chosen Buicks. And we're expecting another very good year. Think about it. Wouldn't you really rather have a Buick? An excited Army sideline. The cadets pulling off the option pass to perfection in the open today. Sam DeLuca said one thing that Aikens can do and do well is throw the ball in addition to being able to run and catch it. He just showed us his amazing ability. I guess that is a tradition here at Army also because we mentioned that both the Dawkins uh, and the other halfback, Bob Anderson, on that undefeated 1958 team were both triple threats, could throw the football. The amazing thing about Aikens is last year he was a wide receiver. This year, because of their needs in the backfield, he was converted to a running back. Probably could be a quarterback also. <laughs> Rutgers has 194 total yards to 194 Army, but a trailing 14 to 6. Sofa hits it to Dan Errico, two yards deep. He'll take it out. Errico to the 22, a 24-yard return. Rutgers will start there, first and 10. One quick first in that Army drive, 78 yards. It only took 11 seconds. A 
one of the things that the uh, Army coaches had talked about during the week was their inability to come up with a big play and also the fact that they were turning the ball over far more often than they were on the other end of that. And today they haven't turned it over much and they certainly have come up with a big play. First and 10, Scarlet Knights, 22 yard line. Baker wide to the left. He's been quiet today. And Albert Smith is stopped cold at the line of scrimmage. Great pursuit in the middle. And the big man to make the play was Jim Jennings from North Brunswick, New Jersey. Playing a good football game. Yes, he was, but the guy that really disrupted things in the Rutgers backfield was, uh, did you say Jim Jennings? Yes, I did. Yeah, he made, he's the guy that came in there. Somebody else actually grabbed the ball carrier, but it was Jennings that tore things up. Staver was also there, the nose guard. It brings up a second down and 12 for Rutgers. The Prairie two for five passing today. Quite a difference from the Rutgers offensive passing show by Hockberg last week. The Prairie has time. He hits Baker for the first time today. And Baker has a first down at the 41 yard line. That is Baker's 18th reception on the season, but only his first today flagged down in the Rutgers backfield. Baker had a big day last week against Penn State. 50 and 76 yard touchdown passes. Coming into today's game, had 17 catches for 457 yards. This is one of the reasons. Puts a good move on the defensive back. However, they're in zone coverage, and that man wasn't concerned with that move. He expected help deep from the two safeties. He hooked up in front of Herb Atten, the uh, strong safety, and LaPrairie right on target for the football. But it is all for naught. Thomas Stammert assessing the penalty against Rutgers, a big offensive holding call. And it brings the ball back to the 11-yard line. Second down and 22. Rutgers, two penalties today. Army with four. But that one a costly one against the Scarlet Knights. Split receivers both sides of the field. The Prairie, draw play. Glenn Beleza. Beleza makes a nice inside cutback. Gets to the 19-yard line. Bob Silver came up from his strong safety position to make the hit. Nice run, but once again, not enough yardage. Army, uh, Rutgers still has about uh, all 14 yards to go for a first down. You just cannot continue to make mistakes. The three turnovers in the first half, the holding penalty on that long pass to Baker. Third down. Long. The Prairie straight drop back. Time. Running out of the pocket, the Prairie. Tucks the ball and goes out of bounds. Gets back three or four yards in the play, but that is all. And Rutgers now sends on the punting unit on fourth down. Rob Olsey's forced the play out of bounds. Well, he didn't have a receiver open downfield. Remember, he is also throwing against the wind, so he could not throw deep downfield. And he was almost compelled to run on that last play. Back in punt formation, Gary Liska, Nate Sassaman deep in single receiving position for Army. Liska, a beauty. Sassaman, 34, fumbles the ball. It's loose, Army recovers back at the 18-yard line. Well, that's one of the differences today. Rutgers has turned the ball over four times. Army has fumbled the ball on several occasions and recovered themselves. Mike Tease, number 26, freshman from Florence, Alabama, recovered the ball for Army. Now the cadets will take over first and 10 from their own 17 yard line. 10.46 to go, third quarter of play. Army leading Rutgers 14 to six. We're at Mikey Stadium in West Point, New York. On first down, Laughlin hands the ball off to Aikens and Aikens puts his head down and barrels to the 26 yard line before Jim Dumont made the tackle. Too much yardage on the play, number 66, Ron Royce, the left offensive guard once again pulling out, this time trapping Bob Dumont. That was the key block. Second down and two. There you'll see number 66 pulling from his left guard position, inside out on Dumont. That's enough to spring the ball carrier. Yeah! Straight up the middle, Aikens, first down on the counter. Harry Swain, Randy Hannes made the tackle. I talked to Elton Aikens yesterday for about 15 minutes after practice, and Sam, he was telling me about his schedule. He's up at 6 o'clock in the morning for breakfast, has to get to formation at 7.15 because of accountability of the cadets. 
7.30 classes, two or three classes in the morning, 12 o'clock lunch, two or three more classes in the afternoon, three o'clock football practice till 5.30, dinner, studying till 11, then lights out. No part-time job. <laughs> no part-time job. Go! Aiken gets the call again and hits the right side for three yards. You know, that's something that's important to mention because this school, United States Military Academy, football is only one of many things. Yes, it is. And I have a, a feeling that they uh, encourage people to go out for the team because when you talk about 180 people combined on the junior varsity and varsity, that's an awful lot of football players, and I would imagine they're strongly encouraged to go out for football. Laughlin back to throw and second down, steps in the pocket, throws a perfect strike to Mark Tripp at the tight end for a first down at the 43. Joe Corbin made the hit for Rutgers. Well, that's what you call threading the needle against zone coverage, which is what Rutgers was in. The receiver frequently hooks up regardless of the pattern. He's got to find an open area, turn and face that quarterback. The quarterback has to have the presence of mind to release the football now, and that's what you have a perfect execution on the play. Straight ahead, William Lampley. Lampley gets to the 47 on first down. And Army continues to run well on the ground. Getting back to Aikens for a moment, Sam, I said, so what's the key to getting through that kind of day? And he simply said, time management. <laughs> I think his time is managed pretty much for him. Well, he wants, he wants to go into the air defense artillery. He spent most of the summer at uh, Fort Bliss in Texas, and he really enjoyed it. Second down and seven. Here's Aikens. Watch out. He's going to throw back to the quarterback, Laughlin. Laughlin catches the ball, advances to the 49, and Dan Errico made the tackle. Haven't seen that one in a long time. No, heads up play by Dan Errico. Once again, the tendency is to go with the flow to the right. There you see Aikens moving to his right. Makes it well now. Doesn't look back until he comes to a halt and throws back to the quarterback. Laughlin, but Errico was right on top of it that time. Third and three at the Rutgers 49, 758 third quarter. Aikens again. First down and more. Aikens at the Rutgers 38-yard line. Dan Errico and Jim Dumont made the stop. Well, they're mixing it up a little bit on this drive, throwing the football a little bit, a little razzle-dazzle. And the halfback throwing back to the quarterback. Evidently, they've caused the Rutgers defense to be a little bit off balance, and now they're starting to run a little bit more effectively. Injured player on the field is Dan Errico of Rutgers. Aikens, 20 rushes, 93 yards on the afternoon. He's completed a pass, two passes, that is, for 83 yards and a touchdown. Quadruple threat. Does it all, including the kickoff returns. 13th in the, in the nation, finished third last uh, last year in the nation. Army has not been overly impressive in running with a football. Coming into today's game, they had been averaging 116 yards on the ground. Of course, last week against Harvard, Aikens had 119 yards himself. I don't think Army expected to be able to move the ball as well as they have on the ground. I talked to offensive coordinator Delahan yesterday, and he said, hey, we're going to have to throw the football. Rutgers is too big and too quick for us. Yeah, of course, they remember last year and the preceding uh, three years, uh, they had not had much success against Rutgers. They lost their last four games. They lost 40 to nothing to Rutgers in 1979. In 1980, Army lost 45 to 7. 81, Rutgers won 48 to nothing. Last year, Rutgers won 24 to 3. Rich Laughlin is the quarterback. And he hands off to Elton Aikens, straight up the middle. Aikens gets four or five yards. Cordilla and Swain, both tackles, made the stop. Too much yardage, five yards on first down. Puts the quarterback or the Army club in an ideal situation on second down. Can pass or run. Because of the weather conditions, I would expect them to uh, run once again. Aikens, 194 total yards. And will add to that total. Aikens looking to the inside, looking to the outside. Jim Dumont corrals him at the 33-yard line. Randy Hannis helping out on the play. 
It'll bring up a third down and five, and Rutgers has to hope to come up with some big third down stop. Yeah, well, they just have to toughen up. There's still plenty of time to come back in this football game, but certainly they were expected to do better against Army today. Army had uh, the easy part of its schedule has just transpired. They came in with a one and three record. In upcoming weeks, they have Notre Dame, BC, Pittsburgh, and of course, the other academies, Navy and Air Force. Third and four, Laughlin looks to the inside, tried a quick pass as Scott Spellman ran a little bit of a look-in pattern from the left side, but the ball was deflected, and I believe we will see number one, Craig Stopa. Of course, on the other hand, this is supposed to be the easy part of Rutgers' schedule over the next few weeks. Stopa 0 for 1 in field goals today, but that attempt was from 55 yards. This one is from 50. He's got the wind at his back. His career longest 50 last year against Missouri. Ball plays yeah. down. Stopa hits this one beautifully. It's good. 50-yard field goal by sophomore Craig Stopa. It's his fifth field goal of the season and his 17th of his career. Army increases their lead to 17-6. Stofa came into today's game with four or five field goal completions, and he's made uh, 23 straight extra points. Army uh, doing a fairly good job of, of mixing it up. They now have 247 total yards, 133 on the ground, 114 in the air. Rutgers, 200 yards, 196 rushing, just four yards in the air. Well, he's a happy young man. Of course, that is the kicker, Stopa. I'll tell you, Stopa was an all-state soccer player until his senior year of high school. Then he gave football a try. And as you can see, he has excelled. Stopa, just a sophomore, still a couple more years here at the United States Military Academy. And all of the cadets are required to have five additional years of service. Stopa hits it deep. James Shedneck, four yards deep. And he's not going to come out with it. The last scoring drive by Army resulting in the field goal by Stopa. 10 plays, 83 yards, 4 minutes and 17 seconds. 6.29 left third quarter. And it's a 17-6 football game. Mercer Hedgeman is the injured Rutgers player on the field. Well, on the uh, previous score here in the second half, much of the yardage came on Aikens, well, all of the yardage came on Aikens' option pass, which went for 78 yards. But on that last drive, Army took control and pretty much dominated the line of scrimmage, mixing it up. They had a couple of passes in there, but they have been able to run the ball effectively against Rutgers here in the second half. Well, with Mercer Hedge been injured, we'll take a timeout. Army leads Rutgers 17 to 6 with 6.29 left in the third quarter from Mikey Stadium in West Point, New York. This is Rutgers football on Madison Square Garden Cable Vision. to living rooms in the world of sports now also presents diversified entertainment programming including classic television spy adventures with Patrick McNee and Diana Rigg in the Avengers trendsetters of the art fashion and music world on Andy Warhol's TV and some of the biggest names in the entertainment world with the Jonathan Schwartz show all on the Madison Square Garden Network consult your local listings for time and channel or contact your local cable system Catch all the excitement of big-time college football each week when Madison Square Garden Cablevision presents all the highlights of two of Eastern football's major powers. Every game of the defending national champion Nittany Lions of Penn State is highlighted each week on MSG Cablevision, as well as every game of their cross-state rival, the Pitt Panthers. Check your local listings for time and day. Penn State and Pitt highlight shows. It's all part of the college football scene this season on Madison Square Garden Cablevision. Sam DeLuca back at Mikey Stadium in West Point, New York. We have a clarification here 
by one of the Corps of Cadets, Tim Pennant, and he said that after you serve your four years, you would then complete five years after school, but you have to complete two years to have military obligation. So there's a clarification. Rutgers has the ball first and 10 from their own 20. And Rutgers has to get some offense going. They're gonna get back in this football game. Jack LaPrairie may have taken too much time. Flag is down on the play. Oh, another mistake which isn't going to help Rutgers uh, cause. There's the Corps of Cadets. Does that mean approval? Andrew Howard. Pendergrass jump. There's yep. Pendergrass off sides. We talked about Elton Akins being a triple threat back. In this football game, he is two for two passing for 83 yards. He has carried the ball 22 times for 99 yards on the ground and has caught one pass for 14 yards for a total of 196 yards offense. First and 15, Rutgers looking for pass. Only the second time today, it will never happen. LaPrairie is buried back at the four yard line. Jim Gentilly. Look like uh, Joe DiGilio, the offensive center who has played well for Rutgers, trying to get a piece of Jim Tilly, couldn't quite get there. The Prairie leads out the Scarlet Knights, second down, 25 at the five. Inside handoff and straight up the middle goes Vernon Williams. Williams gets out to the nine yard line. Williams, who was a backup last year for Bryant Moore, has been the starting fullback all season long. Former Western Massachusetts sprinting champion. He does a 9 800. But when you're running straight up the middle on a play like that, you're not going to have a chance to use your speed. And of course, in watching this game, you can't feel the wind. But it's one of the reasons that the Rutgers has not been throwing the ball very often. Five defensive backs in the ball game for Army. Third and 20. The Prairie option keeps the ball and runs into John Roney. Roney at 6'1", 222 is tough. But there is a flag down on the play, a dead ball foul, personal foul against Army. And that should get Rutgers out of a deep hole. Yes, it should. Jack LaPrairie probably should have pitched out that football on that last option play. There was no one directly in front of him. That's why he elected to run with the ball, but he might have gotten more yardage had he pitched to uh, the tailback. Personal foul. You see that there's no one in front of LaPrairie well, actually, 54 at pretty good position, but he might have done better. In fact, I'm certain he would have done better had he pitched out the football. That's an automatic first down for Rutgers, even though they did not move the ball to where they would have gotten it with the chain. Personal foul like that, first and 10 for the offensive team. So the Prairie with a little bit of breathing room at the 28. Albert Smith. Gets three yards. Stopped by Herb Ayton, John Roney, a bunch of black jerseys in on the stop. Rob Olsey's also backup nose man from Springfield, Virginia. Well, Rutgers has had pretty good success in running with a football, and they're going with the same plays repeatedly. That pitch out to the tailback and also the option play that the Prairie uh, has run so often in this football game. Second down, call it seven. The Prairie straight drop back, has time, throws to Allen Andrews, complete. First pass that Andrews has caught today. Roney and four other black jerseys there to make the stop. Andrews close to a first down, had to get to the 38, and that's just about where he caught the football. Allen Andrews, 23 catches for 197 yards on the season. The Prairie dropping back into the pocket. Sees Andrews over the middle, all alone. Pretty good yardage on the play. Fight for the extra yardage. Good gang tackling by Arnold. Measurement. Thomas Thamer, the referee, indicates first and 10 Rutgers. 
at the 38-yard line. Rutgers trail 17-6, 3.43 to go. Gorgeous afternoon for football. Great crowd on hand. Children of all ages, young, old, picnic atmosphere. It is a truly uh, fine football day. Pageantry all over the place here at West Point. Cheerleaders, band, cadets, and much more. First and 10, Rutgers. The Prairie on the option, and he has stopped Cole. Glenn Beaver, senior from Anaheim, California, starting right end, came up to make the tackle. Once again, the Prairie might have been better off pitching out the football. Quite a difference between Rutgers' offensive performance today and last week. Last week, remember, Hochberg had 367 yards passing against Penn State. Second down, nine. Smith gets three off the left side following the block of Joe Panucci. Loose ball on the play, but I believe the play had been blown dead and it will bring up a third down. Well, Sam, does that hat indicate that first is a general, a lieutenant, just a cadet? Can, can you please explain to me all those ribbons and all the hats? Well, I believe that that is a lieutenant colonel there unless our producer Peter Blank is wrong. <laughs> and the hat, I just wish I had the hat up here in this win. <laughs> okay, there's a look at total yards. 247 to 210, but the big story, Rutgers only one yard in the air. What a difference a week makes. Third down and six. The Prairie sprints out. Lux throws for Andrews, has it, knocks it out of his hands, and it's an incompleted pass. Well, Andrews had first down yardage, but he couldn't hold on to the pigskin, and a flag is down. It's against Rutgers back at the 35-yard line. You'll see that Alan Andrews is completely surrounded by defensive players. It was a tough, tough catch for Andrews. Breaking over the middle. Now, right there is when he should have been hit with a football. He has to wait for the ball, allowing the defender's time to come up and eventually knock it from him. That was number 55, Jim Gentile, who uh, dislodged the football. The Prairie should have released sooner. Gary Liska will come on on fourth down. Rutgers will have to punch it away. Minute 58 left, third quarter. Army leads by 11, and they should be getting the football back. Now Rutgers goes into a fake formation. Liska, the receiver. La Prairie, the quarterback, fumbles the snap, and Rutgers will have to surrender the football anyway. There looked to be some problems in organization, and Rutgers could not get things organized, and Army will take over. In a most inopportune time for a mistake to occur. Let's see how it happens. Does he, he just couldn't get the snap. Julio snapped it, and for some reason, there was a problem with the exchange, and Rutgers is in a hole. First to 10 Army, Rutgers 37-yard line. Rich Laughlin has been in there all the way in the second half. Okay. Hands to Elton Akins, Jim Dumont read the play and stopped Akins for a loss of a yard. And of course, we're likely to see Rutgers' defensive philosophy change a little bit in this situation. They normally play a containing type defense, trying to make things happen in front of and inside the defense. When you're down 17 to three with just a minute 30 remaining in the third quarter, now you want to try to force a turnover, make something happen. We'll see those linebackers blitzing more. On second down, Laughlin sprints to his left. Right there, right there, right there. Run, Keeps run, run, run. the ball. Run. Gets to the Rutgers 34-yard line. Carl Howard and Tyrone Snow came up to make the stop. A pickup of some yardage on the play. It will bring up third and seven. I'm sure Eric Hochberg will be watching this football game, having recently undergone uh, knee surgery. He tore up his knee pretty good, but he was having an outstanding year for Rutgers. We mentioned the 367 yards against Penn State last uh, week, and he had had several other outstanding games. Laughlin sprints to his right on third down, hey! and it's complete. First down, Army, Jarvis Hollingsworth. We caught the big touchdown pass on the option from Elton Akins. Hauls that one in for a first down. Rollout pass trying to draw the defensive end or outside linebacker up. Uh, attempting to contain the quarterback and, of course, throwing in that area that uh, Lionel Washington, well, he normally rushes on the play. 
throwing into the area that perhaps he would have been covering had he dropped back into coverage. Aikens on first and 10, jumps over a couple of people, picks up eight yards to the right side. Carl Howard and Lionel Washington made the stop. He is so quick off the football, Sam. They used to the offensive guard pulling once again, trying to block on Lionel Washington. Doesn't get a clean uh, block, but just enough. A brush block, call it what you will. It was enough to break the ball carry. Aikens, 24 carries, 105 yards in the football game. Second down and two. Straight up the middle. Dave Pratt, first down Army, and the drive continues. Tyrone Stowe again made the tackle for Rutgers. Six seconds left in the third quarter of play, and Army absolutely controlling the line of scrimmage. Yes, they are. They're not just overpowering the Rutgers defensive line and linebackers, but they're mixing it up, and uh, Rutgers trying to overcompensate. They know they've got to get the football back, so that normally uh, encourages linebackers perhaps to overreact, fill, uh, move too quickly, and of course they're hurting them inside and outside. Well, the fans are cheering. Men are, are on their feet. Third quarter is history, and the cadets lead 17 to 6, and they're looking for more. Fourth quarter ready to begin. Bruce Beck, Sam DeLuca, Mikey Stadium, West Point, New York. Army leading Rutgers 17 to 6. They have a first and 10 at the Rutgers 11-yard line. Rich Laughlin hands to Elton Aiken, stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Jim Dumont broke through to make the tackle. Dumont, who had 13 unassisted tackles against Boston College and Syracuse, continues to shine this afternoon. Yeah, see, that was uh, one of those situations where the overreaction or perhaps Jim Dumont feeling the pressure, and he wants to come up with a big play, so he breaks into the backfield, whether by design or just on his own, but that time it worked for Rutgers. Second down, 10. Laughlin bootleg. And he is stopped by Bob Dumont with some help from Jim. It will bring up third and long. And Sam, are we looking at perhaps a very important defensive play for Rutgers failing and with Army yeah, knocking the door? Yeah, I would think so. Frank Burns said we have two hungry football teams here. You see that Bob Dumont is hungry on this play as he comes up and makes the tackle. But certainly Army has taken a, a statistical advantage here the start of the fourth quarter coming into this series they had 273 yards to 212 for Rutgers a big third and seven Aikens twists away from two men Aikens down to the goal line very close to a first down he could get a first down at the half yard line Jeff Cardilla made the saving tackle but Elton Aikens responding in the clutch watch number 78 Tony Segnella who's been alternating at the tackle he has a shot at him and that was Lionel Washington who also had a shot. And they, well, Washington looked up and said, hey, where did he go? Cardilla made the tackle from behind. Measurement. First down marker at the half yard line. Short by four or five inches. Well, two factors for the score. 17 to six Army ahead here at the start of the fourth quarter. One, the absence of Eric Hochberg. Rutgers has one yard passing. And number two, the, uh, the mistakes on the part of the Rutgers team. Three fumbles, one interception in the first half, a couple of costly penalties in the second half. Craig Stofa on to try the field goal. It will be an 18-yard field goal. They'll spot the ball at the eight. Laughlin will hold. Stofa's kick is up and perfect, just like an extra point, perhaps a little bit closer. Army with three more points and with 13-17 left in the football game. The cadets lead by two full touchdowns, 20 to six. We'll be right back. If you're just looking for a small car, your choice is very large. But if you're looking for a small car with advanced front wheel drive engineering, your choice is more limited. And if you're looking for a small car that's also very sporty and maneuverable, you'll find it reassuring to look at this one. Skyhawk, the first car to succeed at being both small and Buick at the same time. Wouldn't you really rather have Buick? By 
by the way, I just opened a resource management account with Payne Weber. Well, I've had an account like that for years. My canceled checks are returned automatically. Merrill Lynch. As a cardholder, I'm offered a $10,000 line of credit. I wish Dean Witter had that. And the securities in my account are insured up to $10 million. Uh, 10 mil? Open a Payne Weber resource management account, and you can be saying... Thank you, Payne Weber. Well, there's the exciting people. I don't know what else you would call them. Frogs, <laughs> characters, Sesame Street individuals. I know those are cheerleaders. In any event, Army leads 20 to 6, and Sam DeLuca, wow. Rutgers, is looking at a very tough task at this point of the football game. And this was supposed to be a game, in all honesty, that they felt they could win. Well, it's a game that uh, they almost feel they have to win. Okay, they're expected to beat Army. They have had great success here the last four years. I had never thought much about male cheerleaders, but how do you dress male cheerleaders? So I guess that explains the uh, the odd outfit. So maybe now we're not that close to Halloween. That, uh, we're getting there. There must be some history in that. It's autumn. It's October. Army leads by 14 points. All right, the answer. Company mascots. Company mascots, okay. It's great having a couple of cadets up here in the booth. James Shedneck has the ball at the eight-yard line, and Shedneck gets to the 18, and then he is gang tackled. Army is playing inspired football. Coach Jim Young came into this ball game. He said to me earlier in the week, there's no doubt that Rutgers has better personnel. They're bigger, they're quicker, but we're going to come out hungry because it's a big football game for us next week. We're playing Notre Dame at Giant Stadium. The scoring drive. Eight plays, 37 yards. It took 336. That clock is becoming ever more important. And Stopa, absolutely perfect on the 18-yard field goal. 13.08 left in the game. We'll keep an eye on that clock. Jack LaFrairie, play action pass. Looking for Andrew Baker, and it's intercepted by Gary Baskin. Baskin at the 30. Run out of bounds by Albert Smith at the 19-yard line. Army with another big break, the fifth turnover committed by Rutgers this afternoon, and that has been the score. Well, the Prairie rolled out, and he ran right into number 73, Lloyd Walker. He forced the throw. He had to throw prematurely, did not have anything on the football, and hence the interception. There you see that was uh, number 73, Lloyd Walker, crashing from his defensive tackle position. Somebody should have been blocking him. Joe DiGilio tried to get a piece, couldn't quite get out there. I believe the offensive tackle missed the block. On first down, Aikens gets a couple, that's all. Stopped by Tyrone Stowe. For Gary Bastion, by the way, that was his second interception of the season, and he brought the ball back 25 yards in impressive fashion. Well, defensive backs don't often get an opportunity to run with a football, and when they do, it's like the last time they're ever going to get a chance to run with it, and that's frequently why you see such outstanding efforts. Second down, nine. Laughlin to Aiken. Aiken sweeps the left, cuts to the inside, cuts to the outside, 11 yard line, and Bill Houston forced Elton out of bounds. Aiken has been the workhorse all afternoon. 118 yards in 28 carries. And that gives him about 220 total yards on the day. He completed two passes for 83 yards, throwing the football at at least one reception for 14 yards. He's a member of the Cadet Gospel Choir in addition to everything he does on the football field. Third down three. Aiken stop. Bob Dumont made the tackle. And I believe on fourth down, we will see Stopa again. Well, this is an important field goal also because uh, two touchdowns would have tied it or possibly given Rutgers the lead. If he makes this, they'll need more than two scores. Stopa will try this one from 29 yards. He has two field goals already today. The most in his career, four last year against Lafayette. And we have an official timeout on the field. Stopa two for three this afternoon, and we have a penalty against Rutgers. That would give Army a first and goal. Another big mistake. Yeah. 
Well, another costly penalty. I don't believe in momentum. I think that momentum exists when a team goes for a period of time without making any errors, either the obvious errors like turnovers, fumbles, interceptions, or the less obvious errors like missed assignments and blown coverages, or again, the obvious ones, the penalties, but certainly uh, Rutgers has come up with the errors, uh, the missed assignments, the blown coverages at inopportune times. This last penalty hurts again. First and goal at the seven. Aikens up the middle, gets three yards. That last signal by Thomas Stammert, the referee, was delay of game. And we'll have to check on why that was called. In any event, it's second down and goal, Army at the four. Send in an extra tight end. And also in the ball game, number 40, Travis Jackson, a freshman tailback from Texarkana, Arkansas. Wide to the right, Matt Oliver, handoff to Jackson. Jackson thrown back, keeps his momentum, but goes down at the 11-yard line. Jim Dumont forced the play. Danny Errico picked him off, but it was really Dumont that made the stop. Well, if there is a guy who can give you the big play, and this is a big play when you can throw the ball carrier for a loss like this, it is Jim Dumont. Outstanding. What an outstanding hard-nosed football player. He recognizes the seriousness of the situation, the urgency of the moment, crashes into the backfield and throws the ball carrier. Sam, if anybody plays with emotion, he does. Well, he'll give you the play. He sure will. Third down. 12 to go for a touchdown. Laughlin hands to Aiken. He's going to put it up. Throws. And it is incomplete. Perhaps one too many. And Bill Houston made the stop. It looked like a couple of people from the Rutgers defensive secondary had a shot at intercepting the ball. And it would have been a big interception because it would have uh, prevented this attempted field goal. So Stopa back on. And we are informed that it was a delay of game penalty a couple moments ago against Rutgers. This will be a 28-yard attempt. Ball will be spotted at the 18 by Laughlin Stopa. We'll try a 28-yarder. Ball plays down, Stopa's kick is up. He may have shanked it, no good. Off to the right. Well, they've still got a chance. Down by uh, just 14 points, two touchdowns will do it, but uh, they've got to do it right now. And of course, I think that Frank Burns would love to have Eric Hochberg in their quarterback. 9.37 to go, and we'll be right back. Time becoming the essence for Rutgers. They have first and 10 from their own 20-yard line, trailing 20 to six in the ball game. On first down, Albert Smith carries to the 26. 9.30 left in the ball game. Army leading by 14. Should be pointed out that Rutgers now has the win at their backs. And I do believe he's gonna have to put it up in, into the air. Second down, call it three. The Prairie in the pocket, in trouble. The Prairie gets to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. John Roney made the tackle. Of course, when you put it in the air, the key becomes pass protection. The Prairie did not have it on that last play. Wow, that's a, that's a precious care, isn't it? Here's a look at the wind. I think the wind is different on the playing field than it is all the way up here, but in any event, it has been a factor. Well, right now, there doesn't seem to be much wind if the flags on the top of the stadium across the way are an indication. La Prairie on third and short. And with a little bit of heart, Jack La Prairie picks up the first down before John Roney made the tackle. That clock is moving. 8.25 remaining here in the fourth quarter. First down. How do they let him into this game? Rutgers three for eight on third downs, and that was the first one that they've made in a while. First and ten, La Prairie has to put it up. As time throws it complete to Len Beleza, but Beleza only gets three or four yards. Sam, I don't see Rutgers receivers getting clear. Well, they're rushing, or at least on that last play, they rushed just three people. 
He kept in one of the setbacks, so they had six people blocking on three, which meant that he only had four receivers downfield, and uh, there's just a lot of defenders out there covering. Rutgers needs to make something happen. They trail by 14. Second down six at the 34-yard line. And here comes Baker on the reverse. Baker's at the 40, and Baker is at the 50. He's at the 35, and he could be gone. Out of bounds at the six-yard line. So Rutgers needed something different, and Andrew Baker comes up with a big play on the end around. What a run. You'll see Joe DiGilio out there in front of him. I do believe DiGilio might have been holding on the play, but it certainly wasn't called. And as you indicated, a big play and a nice run by Andrew Baker. There you see number 55. Is he holding a little bit? It looked to me like he was grasping at somebody in desperation. But anyway, Baker got around the block to the outside, made a nice cut back there, and Rutgers is within striking distance at this moment. Oh. He almost, uh, he almost, he almost lost it. And that's why he ended up out of bounds. Rutgers now with goal to go. And we have a timeout taken by Coach Frank Burns and his staff. 7-15 left in the football game. Clock is running for some strange reason. Now they stop it at 7-12. Know oh, that Frank Burns didn't want to take that timeout. Trailing 20-6. Uh, threatening here. He might need that timeout later, assuming that, well, certainly Rutgers will get another shot, but obviously the key is to score here. Last week, they were inside uh, Penn State's 50-yard line three times, had some pretty good penetration, and did not get on the scoreboard. They've got to score and score quickly. Carl Lombell sends Jack LaFrary back onto the field. The Black Knight very much in attendance at today's football game. The mule close behind. Rutgers off the 60-yard run by Andrew Baker is knocking at the door. They trail by 14, but they have first and goal at the six, and they really need a touchdown. Big play by Andrew Baker. That time running with a football last week, of course, he had uh, TD passes of 50 and 76 yards from Eric Hochberg. Can't tell you the how the loss of Hochberg has hurt this uh, Rutgers club. We mentioned he had 367 yards last week against Penn State. Against Syracuse in his first start of the year, he went 15 for 22 for 154 yards. Remember, he came in, uh, he didn't start against BC, but he came in in the fourth quarter against Boston College. Eric Hochberg hit 19 of 32 for 233 yards. For the game against Boston College, he was 27 of 43 for 293 yards and two touchdowns. Hard to replace a young man who has been that effective for Rutgers for the season. He was 61 of 100 for 814 yards and four touchdowns. Quite a loss. Yes, but in any event, I talked to a lot of the Rutgers players yesterday. Jeff Cardilla, Jack LaPrairie, of course, he said is a man who can take over, who can be a leader, and he said that the players have confidence in the prairie, and that's important. Well, the fact that he had started earlier in the year, and I don't think it was a question of the uh, prairie being inadequate, I think it was a question of Hochberg just having exceptional ability and the ability to, uh, to deliver the long pass. Does seem like a long timeout, doesn't it? It sure does. Rutgers will have first and goal at the six. Now, Thomas Stammert, the referee, was over talking to the Rutgers sidelines. Certainly, television isn't to blame for this timeout because <laughs> we're ready to go. <laughs> okay, so is Thomas Stammert. Seven minutes, 12 seconds left in the football game. Army 20, Rutgers 6, first and goal at the 6. Baker left, Pendergrass right. Smith is the eye back. The Prairie option keeps the ball. Hustles down to the three before John Roney made the tackle. Sam has said it so often, Rutgers has been close, and they haven't been able to punch it into the end zone all year long in critical situations. Well, that time, number 82, Glenn Vivard, was all over the prairie. He did very well just to pick up a couple of yards on the play. Could have been thrown for a loss. Second down and three at the three. Two tight ends. Andrews and Drake, full house backfield behind LaFrairie. LaFrairie fumbles the football, recovers it back at the eight, and now on third down, you've got to come up with something that's different because it's a long way to go. Another mistake, circumstances. 
breakdowns, penalty, errors, and inopportune moments. And certainly Rutgers has had more than its share today. Look at this. Bobbled snap, never had control of the football. A bad break, and yet fortunate for La Prairie to jump on it and recover it. Third down and eight. Now I think you've got to either sprint down or throw the football. Obviously, things change. Instead of three, it's eight, and it's third down. Big third down. La Prairie sets up, throws, incomplete. Intended for Baker, oh. flag down, and it's going to be an interference call against Army. It'll give Rutgers a first and goal at the one yard line. You'll see that Baker has good position. The ball is thrown behind him. As he comes back to catch the football, the defensive back crashes into him. So he was obstructed uh, on the play. He had a shot at the football. The ball was not thrown well. It was Kermit uh, McKelvey, McKelvey yes. that actually made contact. Uh, Baker had McKelvey beaten on the play. A good position on it. A, uh, I guess you can call that a, a break for Rutgers that time. I think so. But the pass was not thrown well. Rutgers with first and goal at the one. 5.56 left. Full house backfield. Straight up the middle goes Vernon Williams. He has stopped short of the goal line. They'll try again on second and goal. Well, the obvious call is to fake that play and then have La Prairie roll out or bootleg the football, and La Prairie does run well. Spot the ball at the one. Then again, you never want to go with the obvious. That's why you can't second-guess coaches' call. Be sure that the Army will be looking for the boot leg also. Full out backfield. Two tight ends. Second and goal at the one. Lenny Peleza did not make it. Should have ran the boot leg. Third and goal at the one. And now the clock becoming a factor. Rutgers needs to score at least twice to tie this football game up or perhaps go ahead. They trail by 14 with five minutes, three seconds remaining, and the clock continues to work. Now, this is a situation where the pressure is on the offensive line, and you can almost say we'll see which team is hungry. And Frank Burns said you've got two hungry teams out there today. Here we go, third and goal at the one. Option, pitch to Albert Smith, stop short. Two-yard line is where they'll spot the ball. And great pursuit on the part of the Black Knight. Eric Griffin came up from his left cornerback position to help make that tackle. Fourth down, two yards to go, and Rutgers has to go for it with 4.23 left in the game. Also a big play by number 82, Glenn Vivar. Uh, Larry Carroll, the other defensive end, has been getting most of the publicity, and he is their best defensive lineman, but that time Bivard was right where he should have been. 5'9", sophomore, Brian Anthony checks into the backfield along with Albert Smith and Vernon Williams. Fourth and two at the two. Last chance for Rutgers. The Prairie rolls, looks, throws. Touchdown, Allen Andrews. And Rutgers stays in the ball game. Boy, he had two receivers in the area. Albert Smith was also there. I wasn't quite certain to whom he was throwing the football, but Alan Andrews came down with it. Watch how both Smith and Andrews wind up in the same area. I think LaPrairie would have liked to have thrown the football sooner. No one was free, held on to it. And there you see Smith going out, but Andrews came up. No doubt he was throwing to Andrews and got good height, jump. Of course, Andrews is 6'5", and that's exactly what they wanted to do, utilize that height. Rutgers will go for two, trailing by eight. Out of the I formation, the Prairie calling signal. The Prairie rolls oh. out, he's in trouble, he throws, and it's incomplete. Pass intended for Allen Andrews, broken up by Herb Eaton and Gary Baston, and Army still holds the lead of eight points with 3.52 to play. We'll be right back. Well, it looked to me like the defensive back was hanging on Alan Andrews on the play. Now, look at that. He had contact before the ball arrived. Officials get some, miss some. That was Herb Ayton, number 28. Rutgers has cut the lead to 8, 352 to play. Still a long way to go. Let's well, of course, another touchdown, but they'll need the two-point conversion just to tie, assuming that they get the football back and are able to score. They go onside with it. 
And Joe Corbin recovers, but a Rutgers player recovered it before the 50-yard line. It has to go 10 yards, and Army should get possession here. It is Army football at the Rutgers 49. Ball has to carry 10 yards, and Rutgers apparently touched the ball before the 50, so Army gets the ball. Now it's up to the Rutgers defense to get it back for the offense. Must come up with a big play. Statistically, uh, we're fairly even in total yards, 284 for Army, 285 for Rutgers. Army has better balance. They've moved the ball yards, well. Passing 159 rushing. And the last four times they've had the foot football, they have really moved it offensively. That's what they'd like to do now, eat the clock and move the ball. Akins, though, is stopped on first down after picking up a yard. Three minutes, 42 seconds left in the game. Rutgers looking to snap a three-game losing streak. Next week, they have Colgate at Rutgers Stadium in Madison Square Garden. Cablevision will be there to bring you all the action. But there's still 3.28 left. And Army leading Rutgers 20-12. Second down, nine to go. Akins hits the left side, gets three yards. It'll bring up a 37. Tyrone Stowe made the tackle. Well, it's not time to celebrate yet. Next weekend, Rutgers and Colgate. You'll see it at 10.30 p.m. Saturday evening. We broadcast Sunday morning at 9. We're looking forward to sharing all the excitement of Rutgers football with you again next week. Big third down for Army, seven minutes to play. Excuse me, 234 to play, seven yards to go. The pass is thrown complete, and it is a first down. Big first down for the cadets to keep the ball. Yes, it was, that was Jarvis Hollingsworth, number 84, that caught the football. Looked like he may have bobbled it a little as he fell out of bounds, but certainly wasn't called. I'm not sure about that anyway. First and 10 for Army at the Rutgers 36. Clock on their side, 2.29 to play. They lead 20 to 12. Aiken, straight up the middle. Gets to the 32-yard line. Elton Akins has been the workhorse today. He has carried the football 33 times for 128 yards. And of course, we can't forget the two passes that he threw off of the halfback option. Two big plays went for 83 yards. Second down and six. Long count for Laughlin. Hands the ball off to William Lampley, straight up the middle. The offensive line continues to surge forward. And yeah, they're getting close to another first down. Bob Dumont made the stop. Now the last time Army beat Rutgers way back in 1972. Rutgers has won the last four. The series began in 1891, and Army leads the series 11-5. Well, if they pull it off, it'll certainly be a big victory for Army. This was one of the games they were not supposed to win. Army came in with a one and three record, and there was indication that they could have been three and one, but then again, they could have been 0 and four. Because uh, in the one game that they won, it was just by a couple of points. They beat Dartmouth, in fact, by one point, 13 to 12, after having been down. 12 to nothing in that football game. Second down and one, a five yard penalty marked off against the Scarlet Knights. Clock running down, a minute 33. Army just looking to hang on to the football and win this ball game. Handing straight up the middle, another first down for Army. Lionel Washington made the tackle, and Army will keep the football as William Lampley picked up the necessary yardage for the first down. And now it's just a matter of the clock. 
running down a minute 15 to play and the Black Knights lead Rutgers 20 to 12 and looking for a major victory for coach Jim Young. Jim Young who came over to West Point from Purdue. He was a head coach there from 77 to 81. He was also in Arizona from 1973 to 76 and he is trying to rebuild a program that many years ago was a very successful one. And Young told me, you know, it's not easy building a program at a school where there are other things, other things that are important. You know, you have to think about education. You have to think about your dedication to your school. And he said, I'm dealing with the future leaders of my country. And that's really something that I'm enjoying. And therefore, I'm not frustrated, even though we're one and three. We've got a long way to go. I'm not setting a time frame in terms of trying to win very quickly in the next year or two. We're just going to do all we can. Now, Coach Jim Young has called over practically the entire team to the sideline. There he is. Very successful coach over the years. Jim Young, 38-19-1 at Purdue. A career record of 70, 35, and 1. And if anyone will turn this program around, he just may be the guy. Elton Akins, the star of the day for Army, 34 carries, 130 yards. Threw a big touchdown pass to Jarvis Hollingsworth. Many thanks to the help up here in the booth today Tim Pettit, Dave Johnson, Lou Shane. Kathy Canning. And Jeff Sato. Laughlin hands off to Aikens. He is stopped. Stopped cold by Tyrone Stowe, but it may be a little too late. 39 seconds left in the football game. Army leading Rutgers 20 to 12. They led 7-3 at halftime. And they have been able to hold the lead the entire way. Thirty-nine seconds left in the game. It will be third and eight at the 22-yard line of Rutgers. Next week, the Scarlet Knights have another tough task. They'll take on the Colgate Red Raiders, who are ranked number two in the nation in NCAA Division I AA. The announcers of this telecast were selected by Madison Square Garden Productions Incorporated. Next week, Rutgers and Colgate. We'll see all the action 10.30 p.m. Saturday night. And we'll see it again Sunday morning at 9. And for the Scarlet Knights, they will have to go back to basics. Try to put together some successful game plan and rebound for four consecutive losses. Because this one looks about history with 39 seconds to go. Rich Laughlin has been in there at quarterback the entire second half. Laughlin back to throw, and he is dumped for a loss back at the 34-yard line by Jim Dumont. Dumont has played a marvelous defensive game. He gives you 100% all the time, and he has been on tackle after tackle this afternoon, and maybe a little bit shaken up, but he'll play his heart out every given day. Clock can just run now. Rutgers has filled all their timeouts. And even though it's fourth down, it doesn't matter. Army will have their second victory of 1983, and it will be a big one. There will be lots of celebrating at West Point tonight. Final score, Black Knights of Army 20, Garland Knights of Rutgers 12. We'll be back with some final words in just a moment. You. I am Pat Delcy with you every week as we take a look at what's happening at Rutgers University. This week we'll be chatting with Coach Frank Burns as we review the Army game. Also, we have highlights from last year's victory over Colgate. The Red Raiders will be coming in for homecoming game this weekend at Rutgers Stadium. We also have with us today Vic Seglis, who is the executive director of the Scarlet R Club, celebrating its 10th anniversary this year. We also will be announcing the winners of the tickets for the Colgate game and giving you a chance to win tickets for the Rutgers Tennessee contest at the Meadowlands October 29th. All of that coming up and much more right here on the Rutgers Sports Review. Thank you for joining us this week. We'll be back in just a moment.
the Rutgers Sports Review. And as always, our very special guest is Coach Frank Burns. Coach, a tough weekend last weekend. Six turnovers, four fumbles, two interceptions, and a sky-high army. Really looking for uh, everything to come their way, and, and it did. It certainly did, Pat. And, uh, you know, Army came out uh, very high emotionally. They were fired up. There's no doubt about that. And I think that was obvious. And uh, I guess the second time we had the football, uh, they had two late hits. And I think it was only because they were so fired up. Uh, their coaches did a great job getting them ready. And they played a very fine football game. On the other hand, uh, you know, I was very disappointed that, uh, you know, we came out, I think, just the opposite. Our kids were very flat. What do you do when the, when the team comes out flat? Is there any way to perk them up or it just stays there, kind of lays there? Well, it's, it's pretty difficult to do, uh, you know, to, to get them going, Pat. I thought we would. Uh, you know, we showed some signs of, of, of getting ready and getting going, but when, once we started to go, we'd, we'd have a fumble or we'd have an interception or something like that. Well, Jack LaPrairie coming into a very high-pressure situation and then winds up getting hurt early in the ball game. Uh, what was the extent of the injury, and you put a flak jacket on him, too? Yeah, I think a lot of people don't realize that, but very very early in the first quarter, uh, LaPrairie went on an option. He carried the ball. He was hit, and he had some uh, uh, injury to his rib cage, cartilage injury. Uh, he's a real tough kid. He didn't say anything, I don't think, for a while. Uh, finally let us know we put a flak jacket on him, and he, he played the entire game with the jacket on. Overall defense, I saw Dumont just all over the field, uh, all through the ball game. Uh, Jimmy was. There's no doubt about that. He, he's all over the football field. Sometimes we get on Jim a little bit. Sometimes he's a little bit uh, too quick to go, you know, and, and a counter can hurt him. But uh, uh, he wasn't hurt by counters this week at all and uh, held his ground well. But, again, he made, he made a lot of plays behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, he made a lot of plays on both sides of football field. I think he had an excellent football game. Key areas that uh, took the game away from well, you know, I'd say, number one, I, let, let's give some credit to West Point. I, I think they did a great job. Their kids played the very emotional football, as we said, Pat, uh, played very aggressive defensively, took advantage of things offensively, took advantage of some breaks. So let's, let's give them credit. They, they deserve credit. On the other hand, uh, you know, we gave things away. If, for, for example, in the third quarter, we didn't play well in the first half, but we were very much in the football game. The game was only 7-3, to three, it, you know, at halftime. And, uh, Albert Smith broke a long run, you know, kind of got things going. Uh, game was 7-6. to six. We were right in the football game. I thought maybe we were going to go on from there and do very well. But in the third quarter, uh, uh, we had the ball uh, five times. Uh, we had one intercepted, and we fumbled three times. We gave the ball away three times. So out of five possessions, we handed the ball over to West Point four times. You certainly can't win the football games playing that way. You went with a running game to, of course, strengthen the aerial attack. How did that work out? Well, we thought, uh, we, we thought, uh, and I still feel that, that we could run very well against West Point. And uh, we thought there were a lot of things we could do on the ground. And we, we picked up a lot of yardage on the ground, as a matter of fact. But again, you know, when you turn the ball over so many times, you just don't, have, you don't get that many, many possessions. I think we had 12 possessions in a football game, for example, and out of the 12 possessions, we turned the ball over half the time, six times. You just can't do anything that way. We're gonna, well, Coach, let's take a look at the Army highlights and see what we can find out uh, on hindsight looking at the ball game. On a first and goal from the one-yard line, Zerone goes in for the first score. About six minutes gone by in the ball game. The PAT by Craig Stope is good. The score is Army 7, Rutgers nothing. And now here comes Jack LaPrairie on a keeper. This is a, a key first down for us. It was a fourth and one situation. I thought Jack handled it very well. He fakes here to uh, Vernon Williams. The end takes the option, cuts up inside, and as I say, picked the first down up. I believe that uh, this is where Jack was injured. Now we have four plays later. Tom Angstad kicking a 24-yard field goal. Tommy's really uh, been doing a great job for us and kicked, he was two for two against West Point. He's only missed one all year, Pat. On the first play of the second half, Rutgers tailback Albert Smith uh, runs 42 yards to the Army 26. He breaks two tackles on that play. We're going to see a replay on this. This is where I thought the game was going to change around, Pat. You know, it was uh, early in the uh, beginning of the second half and uh, Albert uh, ran the ball real well. As you say, he broke two tackles. We came through with a... A long run gave us great field position. I really thought things were going to turn around right here. He really gets away from two men there, finally caught up with by Eric Griffin. Right, Griffin, the safety man, uh, catches him from behind. But again, we're in excellent field position. And really, uh, you know, could have knocked the game home right then. Four plays later, Angstad kicks his second field goal of the game from 41 yards out. 
The ball hit the curve on the back of the crossbar. Right, we got a little bit of a break on that without it. Well, doubt. it went over, though. Well, it counts, that's true. Seven to six is the score at that point. On the next possession, Army has a first and ten, and here's a backbreaker. This is, like you say, the play that I guess kind of done us in. It was uh, Aikens there. Fine tailback, made a real fine uh, uh, fake of an end run and threw the ball to Hollingsworth, a very quick receiver for the TD. Because they've been running the play before, again and again, and this right, time they, they decide to toss it. That's right. They ran that sweep, I guess, about six times prior to throwing the football. And Jarvis Hollingsworth hauls it in and goes the rest of the 78 yards for the touchdown. Point after touchdown was good. It was Army 14, Rutgers 6 after Hollingsworth scamper there. We have Craig Stopa kicking a 50-yard field goal, making it 17 to 6. Right, that young man has a great leg. I think he has a real fine future ahead of him, uh, maybe once he gets out of the Army. Now, uh, late in the quarter, Rutgers with a fourth down from its own 42, fakes a punt, but there's a fumble on the snap. Right, we were in a fourth down situation, and uh, I think we had everything with the way we wanted to. Uh, we were going to throw the ball out to the left, Allen Andrews, but we, we fumble a snap. The third quarter scores 17 to 6. Craig Stopa makes it 20 to 6 with an 18 yarder right there. That's early in the fourth quarter. And now on a second and seven, Andrew Baker runs the reverse, a gain of 60 yards, a great play for you. Yeah, I think Andrew makes a very fine run on this. Uh, Joe DeGilio, our center, makes an exceptional block. Uh, he took the corner man out and ended up taking the safety also. And LaPrairie did a very fine job of faking on his play. We're going to see that block by Joe DeGilio. He literally takes two guys out with one body. And it's, it was a continuous flow blocking situation. You'll see it on the replay. Yeah, here's Joe there, number 55. He, he blocks on the right guard, slides off. Now his job is to block the first thing that shows on the outside. There Here's the, the Julio right there. He knocks the corner down. <clears throat> the safety man ends up going down. Baker makes a very fine move right here, coming back against the grain. And he's caught from behind or from across the football field by number 37. Knocked out of bounds, I guess, on about the two-yard line. Thing. On this same drive, La Prairie passed to Baker on a third and goal. It was incomplete, but uh, there was a pass interference call. Right, he had Baker out in the corner, and uh, 37, the fellow just made the tackle, interfered with Baker. We're going to see a replay on the pass interference call. <laughs> it gives you a first down on the Army one after the flag. Obvious interference. Okay, on a fourth and goal, the Prairie passes to tight end Allen Andrews in the end zone for a touchdown, making the score 20 to 12. Here it comes. Right, we were still in a we were still in a ball game here, Pat. And uh, you know, I wish we had gotten the ball in a little sooner. It took us about, I think, we were down in here pretty tight, and it took us almost two minutes to get the ball into the end zone. But again, we were still in a football game. You had two men in the corner there. Yeah, Albert Smith uh, was supposed to be short, going for the the front flag. Uh, he saw the ball thrown, and I, started, I thought he started running back toward it. The two-point conversion there uh, was broken up with pressure on La Prairie. Now, on the kickoff, Rutgers <clears> attempts <throat> an onside kick. Right. Now, you know, you have to let the kick go 10 yards before you can touch it. And our kid made a mistake. I think we could have could have had that football. He touched the ball just before it went the 10-yard limit. And Army runs out the clock as Dumont uh, brings Don Laughlin, sacking him in the backfield there. And Dumont very slowly gets up after a very weary kind of a game, but it, it was that kind of a contest. Uh, frustration setting in when you have the turnovers, not able to really mm -hmm. get it going, feeling flat, uh, a quarterback injured early in the ball game. Uh, it wasn't a great weekend. No, well, it certainly wasn't a great weekend. Uh, you know, looking ahead, I, I just hope we have some better weekends than we've had. Well, Coach, we're going to take a look at highlights of last year's game against Colgate, the Rutgers win. And, of course, we'll uh, talk about what's coming up this weekend in the Colgate game at Rutgers Stadium, which will be starting at 1.30. We'll be back with those highlights right here on the Rutgers Sports Review after we pause for this message. Jersey is Scarlet Night Country. For 1983, that means an exciting season of Rutgers football as the Scarlet Knights take on some of the top teams in the nation. Don't miss any of this challenging schedule. For information on individual game and group tickets, call 201-932-2766. That's 201-932-2766 for Rutgers football. We're back here on the Rutgers Sports Review. I am Pat Delcy, our guest coach, Frank Burns, and we're going to take a look at the highlights, coach, of last year's very impressive win over Colgate. And a lot of these players, of course, on Colgate's side will be back again for the game this coming weekend. 
We're going to see a pass by Steve Calabria to Rich Ehrenberg, the fullback on the first play here, going to the right side. Yeah, Calabria, I think, is a, a very, very fine quarterback. I think he's one of the better quarterbacks in the East, and uh, Ehrenberg, a very fine running back. And we're going to see a lot of Steve passing here. The next one is to Kovach, number 88, on the left right. side. He likes, to, he likes to come out of the pocket. He likes to sprint out, pull up. He also likes to bootleg. He's got a very, very strong arm path. He's going to go to Kovach again on this next play that we're taking a look at. Third and seven. Hey, this was last year they were primarily a junior team. They have all these kids back. Kovach, a very fine tight end, a good blocker, as well as a fine receiver. A pass now to another fullback to Renzi, number 35. Of course, on those short passes, you give him that pass. You give him the reception. Well, yeah, I think we give him, we'll give him the two or three yards on that, just that drop ball type of pattern. Joe Kozak, the wide receiver, is next to receive a pass from Calabria. This is a touchdown. Right. So I say Calabria has been, I guess he's been a starter. This is his fourth year, and he has a great deal of confidence about him. He automatics a lot at the line, reads coverages extremely well. Here's the speedster, Stacy Hall. This little guy scares you. He's only about five foot six, maybe 165 pounds. He has great, great speed, and if you give him any opening, he's going to go. He's going to go again on this play to another play. Mm -hmm. He's what we call a very fine feet. And the last play will be a run by Rich Ehrenberg, number 22. Ehrenberg is not as fast as Tracy Hall. He's a much stronger runner, and he cuts extremely well, Pat. Well, those are the highlights from last year's game, a 34-17 win by Rutgers. <laughs> Uh, looking down for this Saturday's game, how, how do you think the fellows are going to come out? Well, I think it's going to be a good football game. And, you know, I think our kids, uh, you know, we, we're tired of losing. I think our kids are, want to win a football game. We're going to ver work very hard toward that objective. Coach, I'm sure our viewers would like to know the status of Hochberg. How's Rusty doing now after surgery? Well, Rusty is fine, Pat. He was released from the hospital last Sunday, and he's, he's back in class. And... Uh, just anxious to start rehabilitating his knee. What about other injuries? Hooper was hurt. Dwayne Hooper broke his uh, broke his hand, and he's going to be out probably two to three weeks. Uh, Billy Beshner, I, I think, is going to play some football for us this week. Any other injuries other than the normal aches and pains? Just just the normal aches and pains. That's all. Well, this is homecoming week coming up, of course, and that will give a, a hopefully an added edge of excitement and uh, advance enthusiasm not only to the uh, viewers in the stands but to the players. No, there's no doubt about that. We we expect a, a real good crowd and we expect a crowd that's really pro Rutgers and they'll be a big help to us. Of course, that's a 1.30 start time at Rutgers Stadium. That's correct. Pat. Well, good luck this weekend and we'll see you again next week here on the Rutgers Sports Review. Thank and of you. course, thank you for being with us thank as you. always. Happy to be here. Our very special guest, Coach Frank Burns, always with us here, win or lose, on the Rutgers Sports Review and we'll be talking with him next week, hopefully after a win over Colgate. And we'll be back here on the Rutgers Sports Review with more right after this message.